A championship is on the line today in Hamilton. Colgate stands one win from a Patriot League title. Lehigh can tie the Raiders up top with a road victory. The Colgate Raiders and Lehigh Mountain Hawks next. A Saturday matinee on Time Order Cable Sports Channel. In the snow, Lehigh and Colgate. It's football weather here in November. Great to be with you, Kevin Brown, Paul Seeley. Should be a terrific game here between Lehigh and Colgate. When we saw the Raiders last on this network, it was the middle of September. They were 0-3 after a tough loss to Yale. Now they're one win away from a league championship. Well, that's a great testament to the coaches and the players for not losing focus. They were one point uh, losers to Yale in the game we saw. They've only lost one since. And in the Patriot League, as you see here, they are unbeaten a game ahead of Fordham and Lehigh. And the Raiders have already knocked off the Fordham Rams this year. So a win today, and Colgate will clinch the league championship. And they'll do so if they win behind their dual threat quarterback, Jake Melville. Well, this makes it difficult for Lehigh to uh, cover a run and pass. It makes it difficult for the defense. They have to focus on both aspects of his game. Meanwhile, defensively for the Colgate Raiders, the last time we were here in September, Pat Afrie was a linebacker. Now he's a defensive end. Either way, he's getting great pressure. Well, he's got to contain the Lehigh offense. He can't let anybody around him. If he keeps it in front of him, he's going to have a good game. Nine and a half sacks, you see, fourth in all of the FCS. So you mentioned that Lehigh offense, and it is a good one. With a win today, the Mountain Hawks would tie Colgate, and if Fordham wins, there could be a three-way tie in the loss column. It's a Lehigh offense that has a dual-threat quarterback of its own, Nick Shapnisky. Well, I think he's a little tagged up today. It might, it might hurt him. He may have to sit in the pocket longer. Hopefully, Colgate has seen that in their game and planning around him. Coming off a bit of a hip pointer that's limited in the last two games. And the Lehigh secondary, Quentin Jones, had a great game with two interceptions last week. Well, he's got to contain uh, the quarterback for Colgate. He's a run, pass, throw, so you can't overcommit to either phase of that game. And we'll see how Jones, the sophomore in the Lehigh secondary, handle that task. Get bundled up. Scarves and hats and gloves and hoods. You'll need him today. Lehigh and Colgate with a Patriot League title on the line. Well, the snow has let up for the moment. The chill remains over Andy Kerr Stadium in Hamilton, New York, as the Colgate Raiders and Lehigh Mountain Hawks get set to play. Uh, we want to take a moment. There was a moment before the game, a moment of silence here in Hamilton to remember those that lost their lives and those affected in the terrible events in Paris yesterday. And um, we are lucky to get to be able to just talk about sports and do the things that we do. So thank you to the men and women that keep us safe and our best to anyone affected by that. The third member of our broadcast crew now is Gabby Lucivera. Let's check in with Gabby for more on today's matchup. Hey, Kevin. Well, I hope you guys are staying warm up in the booth. We'll keep it tied down here on the sidelines. Right now, what we're looking at is the Colgate defense, how they're going to be able to hold off Lehigh's offense. Now, you talked about Pat Afrie right before you came down here. And another key member of their defense right now for Colgate is Ty McCollum. Now, he earned a nod as Patriot League Defensive Player of the Week last week after an excellent game against Lafayette. He had two interceptions. Now, that is the first time anybody has done that for Colgate since 2013. Now, uh, you know, Dob Ragalone on the other side for Lehigh, he has been making a name for himself with 100 plus yards in the past five of six games for Lehigh. So strong showing for him last week. But the bottom line, really, these two teams have something to play for. So you know what? We're going to just let him leave it all in the field. Kevin, you'll tell us about it, right? We'll try our best, Gabby. Thank you. And uh, now we know where Paul's scarf went. <laughs> Look good. Absolutely. How about the Colgate huddle? You think this game means something to the Raiders? A win, and they are the Patriot League champs going to the FCS playoffs. And the Raiders fired up. They are unbeaten in Patriot League play. Lehigh's only Patriot League loss, 59-42 to Fordham. Again, here are the stakes. A Lehigh win. Both Lehigh and Colgate would have one loss. Fordham is currently playing Georgetown. If Fordham wins, then the Rams are 5-1 and one and done in the Patriot League. 
And if Lehigh wins, both Lehigh and Colgate will be four and one. So you could have a three-way tie. We'll get into that as we go, but it's simple for Colgate win, and you are in the FCS playoffs. And here's today's temperature. It'll seem a lot sweeter if you win with a wind chill of 27 and some flurries in the air. A competitive all-time series, although Lehigh has won four of the last five, including the last two here. Well, this is for a championship today, Kevin. If you can't get fired up to play, you shouldn't have a uniform on today. Well, I don't think we have much of an issue with that seeing the Colgate huddle. They are <laughs> as fired up as can be. Hey. And they'll get the ball first from Ed Mish, the freshman kicker of the Mountain Hawks. Lehigh in the white, Colgate in the maroon. Let's play ball. John Mataluna at his own four yard line to begin. A wide receiver. Mataluna will start the game in style. Driven out around the 35 yard line. That was a nice return. Uh, Lehigh's going to have to kick it deeper today than that. 31 yards, and of course, a win could be a big factor on special teams. Here's Jake Melville, who's a terrific running quarterback, and something I think that stands out, Paul, is only one interception on the year. Oh, that's great. And today he's going to have to have even less than that to win this game. We'll begin the game with Demetrius Russell, the tailback. Four wide receivers with a tight end, John Quaza, in the slot to the bottom of the screen. Melville will operate just about every play from the shotgun. He gives way to Russell. The first of three tailbacks with John Wilkins and James Holland that should see some run today. Colgate's offensive starters are brought to you by Geico today. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance at geico.com or 1 800 947 Auto. Max Hartsman's taken over the center spot since we last saw Colgate. The Lions played well. And Mataluna, who took that opening kick, has stepped up in a big time way. 40 catches, 549 yards. Mataluna wide receiver here as Melville keeps, worms away from a defender and bursts free for a first down into Lehigh territory. Melville got right past Greg Palma, the senior nose guard, in the backfield and scooted free for a big game. Let's watch that left end from the uh, left end there for Lehigh. The quarterback just reads it, and as soon as he comes down again, pulls the ball out, goes around right end. A great read by the Colgate quarterback. The first down. A gain of 22 for Melville, who's run for 622 yards on a year, more than five per carry. From the Lehigh 40, Melville to throw it. Lost one, it's incomplete. One of the most impressive things today about the Colgate offense, I noticed four sophomores starting. And that was one of the sophomores right there, Alex Greenewald, who nearly hauled it in a double coverage. Lehigh's defensive starters in the 3 4 brought to you by Geico. Kavina's a terrific player off the edge. Colton Caslow, a linebacker there, tackling leader. Really, it's a 3 3 5. It's a, a 3 3 stack. Randall Lawson plays that hybrid D back linebacker spot they call the road. Right, with four wideouts, you have to play that. You know, it's hard to put more guys inside the box. And that's where I think Colgate can exploit the Lehigh defense. Right now, Quaz is the second receiver from the bottom, and Lawson, the rover, is covering him in the tight end. Melville again keeps off the fake, and this time not much on the edge. Matthew Laub was there along with Oliver Rigo, the cornerback off the edge, third and long coming up. And Lehigh was just playing a man-to-man -man defense that time on the receivers. You expect to see more man-to-man? -man? Well. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, it, it just depends on how well the Colgate's passing before they have to go to a zone. And now they come up with a four wide. Connor Wigan on top of the street. Well, they'll may throw his second pass of the game here. Certainly that situation on third and eight. Melville, quick pressure, ball's batted. Melville makes the catch, he can run it, and he's got a first down. That was pure athleticism, Kevin. He just stayed right where that, that, that was great bit of luck, I'll tell you that. One way to pad your stats, huh? How about the concentration by the quarterback, Melville, throwing to himself for the gain of nine. Well, there's that old adage that uh, I'd rather be lucky than good, and on that play, he may have been a little bit of both. Well, Greg Palma got a paw on it, and Melville makes the catch. Almost never see that. 
First down gives John Wilkins in the game. Pulling his way forward for a yard. You know, every now and then you see a quarterback catch a deflected pass. What you almost never see is the quarterback then gaining positive yards. Think of Brett Favre's first career pass was batted to himself. He had a big loss on the play. And that's in pro football. I mean, this kid is a runner, too. He may be able to play running back in some other system. So he's got both set of skills. Second and long here. Wilkins out of the game. James Holland is the back. Holland will block for Melville. That one short of Greenewald. And that may have been tipped as well at the line of scrimmage. Looked like it was. Setting up a third and long. The defensive line for, for Lee is a tall bunch of guys. Big drinks of water out there. 6'4, six, 6'5. Six, That's tough to throw over. Cavinas is the tallest one at 6'5. All six linemen in the two deep are between 6'2 and 6'5 for the Mountain Hawks. Lehigh's D line played well last week. Four sacks against Holy Cross. Come after Melville here at a third down and eight. Has time. Pass is knocked away. This was Brandon Leakes in the secondary, the junior defensive back to set up fourth and long. Now, one thing you teach the defensive line is if you can't, if you if you can't get to the quarterback, stay in the passing lane. Get your hands up. Make him throw the ball higher than he wants to. And there that defensive back just got up and got the tip on it. Well, Colgate is 11 out of 17 in Patriot League play and fourth down tries. They go for it all the time and they will go for it here. Out of field goal range on a blustery day. Fourth and eight, need the 20 yard line of Lehigh. Melville, nowhere to go. He'll take off, needs the 20, has the 20, has the 10, has the five. And has the end zone. That was an outstanding run by Melville. The, the real block came from the wide receiver who stayed right with him. You're, that you're going to see number uh, number one, the wide out to the bottom of the screen. He was man to man. He stayed right with it, focused up, and he makes a great block here at the end for the touchdown. You can just see him. Number three, my fault there, number three. Alex Greenewalt with the block to spring Melville at the end. It's a 28 yard run, Melville's sixth rushing touchdown of the season. And the Raiders' opening drive is a good one. Six at least. Jonah Bowman, the extra point try, and make it seven. One. A 28 yard run on a fourth down for Melville. And Colgate looking for a Patriot League title is in front first. Touchdown drive to start for the Colgate Raiders. Jake Melville with a 28 yard touchdown run as Colgate takes the early lead on Lehigh and they do so under the second year head coach Dan Hunt. The part of seven Patriot League titles as an assistant under Dick Biddle. On the other side, Andy Cohen, 10 years as the head coach of the Lehigh Mountain Hawks. There's a touchdown drive. You were talking as we were going to break about Lehigh needing to maybe add a defensive spy for Melvin. Well, you're only rushing three. That means you have eight in the secondary. When they keep him in the Melville in the pocket, it was difficult to throw. So they got to take a good fast linebacker and just spy the quarterback, and that's his responsibility. Owen well, kicks it away. Donovan Harris for Lehigh finds his seam. And Harris is tripped up by the kicker, Bowman. But an excellent return puts the Mountain Hawks at their own 45. I can't tell you how many times the kicker makes the tackle. And I don't understand why somebody isn't assigned to block him. It's, uh, that was a great return by Lehigh. Great field position. Put a little pressure on a Colgate D. Nick Shapnisky has not played much the last two weeks, suffered a hip injury on a touchdown run against Fordham. He does get the start today. He's their dual threat quarterback, and so this is more suited for him than their other quarterback, the freshman Brad Mays, more of a pocket passer. I see Mays, though, depending on the game situation. Started with a throw for Shapnisky. Steps away from one and is taken down by a second Colgate player, Brett Field, 
with his seventh sack of the year off the line. Now the Lehigh offensive starter is brought to you by Geico in the offensive line that was vanquished there with the captain at left guard, Matt Ford, leading the group. Troy Pelletier, 64 catches on the year. Second team All-Patriot League. Last year as a freshman and even better. Watch out for number three. He's alone to the bottom of the screen. On a second and long, a go to Pelletier. And he is wrapped up. Charles Carney from behind with the coverage in front from Tyler Castillo. And they are part of the defensive starters brought to you by Geico with Campbell and Field who just made the sack really stepping up their play in conference games. Kyle Diener is the leading tackler, 85 for the junior of the year. And you just saw Castillo make the play. He was a nickelback at the beginning of the year, now a starter. He is awful big up front. So they should give him some time to throw if he stays in that pocket. <laughs> Only a rush of three here, and the pass complete to Pelletier. Well, Chef Niski had all day to throw, and Pelletier found the soft spot of the zone. Yeah, he just a nice little comeback by him. He was patient, and uh, Chef Niski was patient again. Found that receiver for the first down. A lot of zone defense, and you can see he just split the zone. He just sat right in there and waited for the quarterback to read it. Pelletier, five plus catches in seven straight games. Four games this year, 10 or more receptions as Lehigh pushes the ground game to start. And the Mountain Hawks will go to their fullback, Mackenzie Crawford, who is barely involved in the run game, but he gets the first tote for four yards. The three running backs that Lehigh plays are either freshmen or sophomores. And it is Crawford, the fullback and junior, getting the start today. Bit of a surprise. Both teams have a lot of underclassmen, especially Colgate. So the future looks bright. Today's a big day. Here's Pelletier's third catch of the drive. It is good for a first down. You can see the linebacker for Colgate. When you watch those quarterback eyes, a lot of times you miss with the receiver. He's, he's right next to you. He's had, he needs to be on the swivel, find him, and see if you can't cut off that pass between the quarterback and the receiver. Chapniski already three for three. Lehigh having a little personnel trouble right now. Still plenty of time on the play clock. And the Mountain Hawks will go five wide with Trevor Sakaris in the game in the slot left. It is Sakaris on the quick hitter. Pelletier is a block to spring Sakaris for a sizable pickup near the Colgate bench. Now, I don't know why more teams don't do that. I love that little bubble screen. It's always good for three to five yards. It's a very safe play. They ran it to uh, the shorter side of the field that time. Colgate being in the zone, you see 47, the linebacker was going out on an angle, which gave him separation with the wide receiver. Gate of nine there. Dominic Bragalo, the freshman, their leading rusher is the tailback. And he'll take it here for a first down. Spun down to the 14-yard line. Bragalona to South Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Set a Pennsylvania state record last year as a senior with over 4,700 total yards. <laughs> That's pretty good for a state that uh, created a lot of great running backs, including Tony Dorsett, Heisman Trophy winner a long time ago, among others. Bragalona, the Colgate staff loved, but they didn't have a running back scholarship this year. And here he is playing against Colgate. Ball is inside the 15-yard line. The give is not to brag alone. Chef Niski's kept it and fooled everybody. It's a touchdown for the junior quarterback. You know, on these read options, it is so important for those ends. We'll see which end it was. And you can just see it, he, he holds that ball, 47 comes down, linebacker filled inside, just pulls the ball. You have to be disciplined, you have to stay at home and let your teammates help you. And Chapniski will stay in as the holder after his 11th touchdown run. And missed 27 of 30 on extra points this year. Maybe the cold weather's helping him, numbing up that hip today. He doesn't feel it so bad. They'd be right. Running touchdowns for each quarterback were 7 7. So scoring drives for each team to start. Shafniski with a touchdown run of 
following Melville's touchdown run, and Colgate will tilt the ball for the second time. Pretty much mirror images of one another. Very similar drives, similar plays. Chris Morgan will take this from his own goal line. The cornerback. Morgan across the 25-yard line. Tackled on the play by Colton Caslow, who is Lehigh's leading tackler and still plays special teams. You can see the a, a lot of teams in the, the kicker for Lehigh did a great job of pinning Colgate in the corner. That only gives you the sideline to work with. Therefore, your, your kick, uh, kickoff team can compress down and not give them a lot of green to work with. So the ball, the 26-yard line officially, about 10 yards behind where Colgate started on the last drive after the kick return. James Holland in the backfield with Melville. And a quick hitter is to the tight end, Quaza. Good open field tackle made by Sam McCloskey, the freshman free safety on a short game. Uh, I don't care what level you're playing at. When I see freshmen being able to start in games, that says a lot for the skill level of those kids. Now McCloskey would have a few doing so for Lehigh. He's making his fifth straight start in place of Brian Givens, who is out with an illness. They're hoping to have him back next week. Two yards on the pass for Quaza. They're leading receivers in the tight end spot. Hearing his name quite a bit if things go Colgate's way. Big hit inside as Holland gets thrown to the ground. Caslow in on the play, along with Greg Palma, the nose guard. Nice fill by the linebacker, number five, made a nice hit in there. Palma's had an interesting game so far. He's been beaten by Melville at an option. He knocked a pass down that Melville caught, and here he makes his stop only a yard on the play. Lehigh 48% on third down tries in Patriot League play. Faced with a third and long here. Only a three-man rush. Melville, Quaza, wide open first down. And Quaza is across the Lehigh 40. That's a big target going down the middle of the field. And again, in zone defense, you're going to give up something in the middle. But once those wide receivers get deep, you can see the tight end just came right across the middle in the zone, caught the ball, and some great yardage there. 32 yards to Quaza, the senior. Last year against Lehigh, had five catches for 90 yards. He's grabbed a couple of balls on this drive. Back on the ground, this is Demetrius Russell worming free. Russell, the senior, with a big run and back-to-back -back huge plays. Again, of 18 here for Colgate. That was a nice quick hitter up the middle. And you see he just made a nice cut on the linebacker number five, who was right in the hole. That was more the running back than any other play. Line did well, but running back did better. Russell over four yards of carry now with that tote. Senior out of Tampa, Florida. He'll stay in the game on a first down. And this time he's dragging Caslow, the middle linebacker, who's involved on just about every play. <laughs> well, that time he didn't put a move on him. So it's a uh, good play by both. It's a nice little drive here for Colgate. Caslow, a first-team All-Patriot League player last year. 75 tackles coming in in only seven games. And we have two Florida guys going at That's it. That's right. Weather. I guess it doesn't bother those two. Caslow from Lake Brantley High School, which has produced four Lehigh players in the last decade. Elbow's pass here is reeled in by John Mataluna. A diving catch to set up what'll be a third and two. That's a gain of seven yards. Yeah, that was all metal into that play. He came back, got his hands out, his arms extended. That's a great catch. And Melville looked all the way and just a great catch. It looked like he was slipping a little bit, but still made the, the catch when you need to. 
Third down will call it a short three. Lehigh needs to get to the 10 for a first down. John Wilkins, the tailback. Nelvo gives to Wilkins up the middle for a first down. Junior out of the powerhouse high school, Don Bosco Prep, who's been limited by injury the last few games. But he's their go-to guy up the middle. Well, when you have a three front, you're going to give a, a natural hole to the line of scrimmage. You really need fill by the linebackers. And that time, he just made a nice cut and got inside. Three down linemen again on his first and goal from the six. It is Wilkins stumbling his way across the five. Got a few yards and kept his balance low. We'll have to see whether, whether that line tripped him up or a defensive tackle. I didn't quite see it. Got to keep your feet, though. John Wilkins last year in Colgate's loss to Lehigh scored three touchdowns and a 30-27 Lehigh win. Neither coach put too much stock in that, though, as both teams had losing records last year. Seasons to forget in 2014 to remember in 2015. Wilkins up the middle to the goal line. No touchdown signaled, and he is just out. And Wilkins a little bit shaken up, limping out of the huddle. Here. It was tough to see whether the ball had, had broken the plane or not. Well, there's Wilkins. Yep. Third down and in inches, and Colgate stays in the shotgun with Holland the tailback. Melville will give it up. Holland plunges, and he is in. Touchdown, Colgate. That was a great effort by the running back to just Lead up in there and push that pile. That's the toughest place to see. So nice, nice job done by that offensive line. You get down in there, you, you know where that defensive line's going, and you got to dig them out of there. So. It was a great job by Cole Day for that touchdown. Holland coming off a three touchdown game last week. 15 carries, 47 yards, but he scored three times against Lafayette. And he is their short yardage tailback again. Three drives, three touchdowns, just like we thought. 38 degrees and nothing but offense here at Hamilton. Two drives and two touchdowns for Colgate. The last one capped off by James Holland's one yard. Touchdown plunge, and the Raiders are in front. Dan Hunt's team started the year 0-3, losses to Navy, New Hampshire, and Yale. 5-1 since the only loss out of conference against Princeton. In Patriot League play, they are unbeaten and one win away in their first Patriot League title since 2012. And one of those losses, Navy's a pretty good football Absolutely. team. Absolutely. They just beat Memphis last week, so no shame in that. Playing above your, a, a level above your play. A five and three in FCS play. Next year, Colgate will start the season against FBS team Syracuse in the Dome. Kick return by Harris, shy of the 30, and back to the sidelines we go, and Gabby once again. Hey, thanks, Kevin. It looks like my uh, microphone battery got a little cold. Wanted to go warm up, but we're back here, and I have Don Vaughn here with me on the sidelines. You know a thing or two maybe about being a little cold? This is the head coach of the men's hockey team here at Colgate, and you guys took a loss against Cornell last night. How hungry are you guys to get back out and play them tonight? Well, yeah, I mean, the good thing is we do get that opportunity. I know our guys were really disappointed after the loss last night. It's it's a tough building to play, and we came up short 5-1 against a very good Cornell team, but uh, yeah, we feel like we have something to prove. We know we're a better team than what we showed last night, and uh, we're anxious to give it a try again tonight. You guys are going to have a whole new facility to play in next season. Tell me a little bit about how this rink is coming along. It's great. I mean, it's on uh, it's on budget, which makes our administration happy, and it's on target in terms of the opening timetable. So that makes me happy. But it's been a process. It's uh, it's been it's great for our program. It, it speaks uh, volumes about how important athletics is here at Colgate and how strongly our administration feel about our program and the other sports that are going into the building at well, as well. But it, it's exciting. We're really looking forward to opening. Uh, grand opening will be next October 1st. Uh, 
and we'll be playing Army in, uh, in the brand new uh, 65 Arena and uh, the Stephen, J uh, Stephen Riggs rink. So we're, we're thrilled. And forget about next year, but you guys are going to have a whole new venue to play in in just a few weeks. Tell me about this trip. Yeah, we're, uh, we're very fortunate. We're playing in a tournament in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Uh, the great educational opportunity for our guys. And uh, we're, we're, we're in a tournament with Northeastern, Brown, and Lowell. And uh, we'll be uh, participating in some uh, educational pieces and components with some of the local schools, uh, playing in uh, the home of the Belfast Giants, the pro team there, and expecting a sellout. Just a wonderful trip all the way around during uh, Thanksgiving week. So it's an exciting opportunity for our guys. All right, great. Well, thanks so much, and best of luck out there. Now, Kevin, I'd love a trip to Ireland, but I really just don't think I'm good enough at hockey for that. Well, I think you could go and do other things in Ireland, Gab, but your last name's Lucivero. You might have a little bit of, of an issue getting in. The Browns and the Sealies of the world. <laughs> Second down here after an incompletion, and Dom Bragalo and burst free. His second first down carry of the drive. While Gabby was talking to Don, you saw Bragalo make some nice moves, and the freshman is impressive again. Well, you mentioned that uh, Colgate didn't have a running back scholarship. I might have found one. You know, recruit him as <laughs> anything. That kid can play. He's got some great feet and vision. Get it right back okay. to him. Bragalo's 5'11", 205. And a gain of three yards for the freshman here, who's run for 100 yards in four straight games. I'm a, the Lehigh coaches must agree with me because they keep giving him the ball, so he's an outstanding player. Well, Lehigh uh, pulled opposite of Colgate. Colgate's got three tailbacks. They were all here last year. Lehigh did not return any running backs with rushing yards, so it's Bragg alone with a freshman, Miko Brister, and a sophomore, Nana Amankwa Aye. And have carried the load. Makwa Aye's in now as Shafniski looks to throw. Instead, he'll tuck and run oh. right near the sideline. Oh. That's a late hit and, uh, and will be penalized. Yeah. So yeah, that, that just adds, you, you got to control that. This is too big a game to get penalties like that. He was clearly out of bounds. There was nothing close about that whatsoever. You have enough skill in you to, if you're starting for Colgate defense to be able to pull up and not hit that quarterback out of bounds. After the play, dead ball foul, personal foul, defense, number 99. Late hit out of bounds. 15-yard penalty from the dead ball spot and end of the run, automatic, first down. It's a backup defensive tackle, Connor Buck, our first flag of the game as we hear from Michael Sechrist. And that's got to drive the coaches crazy. I don't think he would have had the first down. He was short and then... It's, cl it's yeah, closer. It was close. I got to give him a little bit more than that. He, he had him in the grasp. That is the game we know now, though. Late hits, anything that's questionable goes the way of player safety. Shafniski inside the 30-yard line here of Colgate gives to Bragalone. Takes more than one man to get this young man down. Don Bragalone with a sizable pickup to end the first quarter. We've seen three drives, we've seen three touchdowns. Melville and Holland on the ground for Colgate and Shapnisky on the ground for Lehigh. Terrific football so far with a Patriot League championship on the line. Lehigh football to begin the second quarter. Colgate in front, a win and the Raiders are Patriot League champs. Kevin Brown, Paul Seeley with Gabby Lucivero down on the sidelines and the rest of our Time Warner crew. Your first quarter numbers. Good ones for the offense. Colgate two drives, two touchdowns, and Lehigh's in the midst of its second drive right now with a second and five from the Raider 22. Nick Shapnisky is the quarterback. Dom Bragalo in the running back. After a gain of five by Bragalo to end of the first. He's got five carries, 34 yards so far. It was pretty even in the stats. This is a one. As Bragalone finds a big pile here and is thrown backwards. Whole host of Raiders in on the play, including Christian Hardegree, the strong safety, along with Pat Afrie and Alex Campbell off the line. The defensive end there for Colgate, 47. Can't pronounce his name is Co Carney. He made the play there. He stopped, he prevented uh, Shinaski from, from going around, made him hand off, and there was no room. Very good play. No gain, third and five coming up. Four down linemen for the Raiders who show pressure. 
They rush five. Chapnisky's pass complete inside the 10 yard line. Sasha Kelsey, their fifth receiver, comes up with a first down grab. That was just a nice crossing pattern. He had a lot of time to throw it. You get more than four seconds in there. He'll find that receiver coming across the middle in zone defense. It's hard to cover. Kelsey, another Florida product out of Miami, leads the team in yards per reception at nearly 16 and a half per catch. Pelletier and Casey, the two receivers now on a big set, first and goal from the nine. Chapnisky keeps again, trying to find the edge, and he is driven out of bounds by Castillo. A pickup of five yards down to the fourth. We saw that fake work yeah, for a touchdown in the first well, quarter. It's the bread and butter play of uh, the style of offense, the, the read option. You're just looking at those defensive ends, waiting for them to, you know, show a little lack of patience and gonna pull the ball out and go around you. A little power set here. Extra fullback here, Crawford. Bragolo and delayed handoff. Darting through the middle. Stood up shy of the goal line. Just a little fake of a speed sweep. And they give the Bragalone up the middle. We'll see the wide receiver coming fast. We didn't catch it there, but Bragalone just took the ball straight ahead. Power football. Alex Campbell, first one to get him. Third down, just inside the one yard line. Bragalone and Crawford in the backfield. Ten in the box for Colgate. It is Bragalone reversing direction. Touchdown, Lehigh. That was a nice little cut by Bragalone, cutting back to the left and getting in the end zone. You know, I'm still impressed with the fact that he, he set the Pennsylvania State record. The more I think of it, all the great running backs of, of late, Shady McCoy, unbelievable. Bragalone just saw Morgan close in the gap and cut inside. Great vision by a freshman. For Bragalone, his fourth rushing touchdown of the year, fifth total. And Mish will try and tie the game. And our streak continues. Four drives, four touchdowns on the ground, four extra points. Could be one of those games. Who scores last wins? One more look at this one yard touchdown plunge. That touchdown was just a little what they call a counter trade. They pulled the fullback and the tackle around. So it starts one way, but it hits back the other when those linemen and that fullback get a chance to, to seal their blocks. And let me put you in the shoes right now of Lehigh defensive coordinator Joe Bottolari. I don't know what his shoe size is, but let's let's put you in there metaphorically. What, what do you do to stop well, I, Colgate so far? I'd be sending a couple more guys. I, I would gamble a little bit with some of those linebackers to see if you can't create a little chaos in the backfield for Colgate. You know, you sit there, let, let, let that field expand. Now you've got Melville who can run and pass, and he's done both. So if I'm them, I'm going to make him make a decision a little faster. I'm not going to give him that time. Melville right now four at a 750 yards, also three carries, 52 yards, and a touchdown. It's a very important kick here. Let's see if he squeezes it down into the corner. When he kicked it in the middle, the first one, you saw the yards that they got. You're just creating less of a field for that uh, returner to run in. Or you can do this, just kick it in the end zone. Oh, Mataluna will take it out. Morgan is a blocker. And Mataluna dances to the sideline. Makes that a worthwhile decision. Just shy of the 30-yard line. Let's return to Gabby on the sidelines with another Colgate guest. Thanks, Kevin. Yep, Ryan Baker, volleyball coach here at Colgate. Now, thanks for joining us out in the cold right now. I know you can't wait to get back inside. You've got a game pretty soon. 
but it's senior day, right? Yeah, senior day. It's always a bittersweet day. Uh, I, I really love these seniors. They've added a lot to the program, so I'll be sad to see them go, but luckily we have another game left, or maybe two, so I get some more time with them. That's right. You do have a few more games left, earned a spot in the Patriot League tournament, so what are you guys doing to prepare? You know, I, I know we're playing American, who's the perennial champion, so I mean, we've been working hard the last week. We had a feeling we were going to see them early on, so I, I, I think we've had some good practices of late. You've had some success yourself as a coach. I know you said it's been a long time here, but a milestone for you, 150 wins. What was it like reaching that milestone? Uh, you know, I mean, I've had some great players and great coaches. I mean, I'm just a part of the puzzle. I mean, without great players, you have no wins. So I've been very fortunate along in my time at Colgate to have such good players. All right, well, thanks so much for talking with us today. Good luck in your game. It's coming up soon, so we'll let you get back to that and get out of the cold. Kevin? Thank you. Thanks, Gabby. Thanks to Ryan for joining us, and congratulations on a milestone to one of the good guys around this Colgate athletic program, which is full of them, good guys and gals. Second down, Melville to Demetrius Russell. Not much there. And a third down and long again coming up for Colgate, which set a few of these in the early going. You'll, you'll see Lehigh now is in, are in a 3-3, really. Uh, they did a 3-3 stack. They've sent a couple linebackers. I don't know, maybe those Lehigh coaches are connected to my headset here. I'm not sure, but they create a lot of, some problems on that, those two plays, and now you have third and long. Noah Rob made the tackle there, senior linebacker. Nearly 140 career tackles for the senior out of Poorfield, Pennsylvania, far from Lehigh. Four receivers on a third and seven for Melville. Here comes an extra rush. Line picks it up. Melville gets Mataluna for a first down. That was just a nice comeback play by Mataluna. Nice hands. Great pass and catch. Second grab for Mataluna of the game. This one in front of Oliver Rigo, their excellent cover corner. I'm an official timeout right now. The officials are over on the oh. Lehigh sideline. I think one of the coaches got uh, banged up a bit. Yes. Andy Cohen, did he take the shot? I think so. Well, I'll tell you something. As a coach of 41 years, I always stand behind the offense. <laughs> you have no equipment on. I don't care how tough you think you are. You get hit on that sideline, it hurts. Well, Andy Cohen was a former setter, so he's got some toughness. <laughs> yeah. Well, you get a quick look here. There's some toughness, and, then, and then there's boom, a helmet to the head without a helmet on. So. Friendly fire there against Andy Cohen. First down, Holland. He's got a first for Colgate on the run of 11 yards. James Holland. Yet another player from Florida, Paul, making an impact in the cold. Yeah, obviously it doesn't, and, and um, obviously the cold doesn't affect, he's even got short sleeves on, so this guy's a tough guy from Florida. Out of Royal must, Palm Beach. <laughs> it's not cold, it's not this cold there today. <laughs> to the 42-yard line of Lehigh, and again, Colgate is in enemy territory. Back to Holland up the middle. Ripped down by the right hand of Haslow. And Florida on Florida right there. When they play this three linebacker system, there's a lot of green to cover. So it, it, you have to be an outstanding uh, tackler in the open field to play this defense. The last time Kessel missed the tackle and uh, Colgate got some yardage out of it. This time he made the tackle. So they're, they're trading blows here in this series. Caslow with a season opener this year at 17 tackles, a career high against Central Connecticut State. Backed up quite a few already. Second and five, the backfield empty. Melville will keep, and down he goes. It's Caslow filling the gap. <laughs> well, that time he didn't miss. And he, he's been a little inconsistent today. He's made some great plays. Obviously, that one was, and he's missed the field. But overall, again, spying that quarterback, staying right with him, not going back in, in pass coverage. You can see right by his eyes. He didn't take his eyes off Melville for one second. Two-yard loss on the play. Another third and seven for Colgate, which has seemingly been in this down and distance all afternoon. Oh, 
Plaza, bottom of the screen in a slot, covered by a linebacker right now in Condis. Melville's looking his way. Coverage is there, and Melville will run it right near the first down spot. He needed the 32, and it all depends on the marker. He is right at the line to gain. No, I'd be surprised. Michael Seacrest is eyeing this, and he's called for a first down. Uh, that's 50 yards away. If I'm Lehigh, I wish I had a little uh, measurement there. That's on those close ones. It's a big game. You know, and going out of bounds, it's a judgment. It's how far the ball got upfield. I'm sure the Lehigh coaches aren't too happy, but. Maybe they're just trying to shrug off the helmet hits. <laughs> Seven yards. First down with Russell, the tailback. Which comes to the linebackers. Melville keeps, gets a block from Quaza and darts across the 25. Can that end? It's Comes down again, and, and Melville is just going to wait to see how he does. And it all depends on that defensive end. Watch his feet next time. When the outside foot crosses over, his left foot crosses over his body, Melville pulls it out. There's no way you can recover once you've committed your feet to the dive. None. But by the way, Caslow again in on a tackle on Melville's sixth carry. A great afternoon for him so far. Demetrius Russell here after the first down pickup. Russell with a gain of three yards. Now on Melville, Chris Young, the offensive coordinator, who's up here in the booth, has talked to us about how Melville has really taken ownership of the offense as a junior. He starts to tweak plays. He's seeing the field better. He's added some pounds and durability. Last year, just a few games with Mono sort of stunted his development, but he's made up for it this season. Well, he must be a hard worker in practice because that's where you're going to get good. Re uh, repetition on the plays, the reads. Going for the end zone here, and he overshot Alex Greenewald. You know, it's how hard you work in the drills that the coaches give you so that you get that experience to take into the game, which, again, the more he plays in the game, the better he's going to be. This whole coaching staff, though, from Chris Young to Paul Schafter to Dan Hunt, all of them use the phrase growing up. This team has grown up this year, learned what to do in tougher situations. Look at third downs today, three of four, all in third and longs, and another third and seven awaits. The majority of players today are underclassmen. So it's a uh, whole okay, future looks bright if everybody stays healthy. Elvo keeps it on a third and seven. He needed the 12-yard line, and he is one yard shy. And Dan Hunt will keep the offense on the field for a fourth and one. I don't see the kicker coming out. This he just tucks in behind that big old right guard who's made that. Oh, just got his feet. Just at the end. Second fourth down try for Colgate, which had a fourth and eight touchdown run for Melville in the first quarter. Only need a yard right here. Melville keeps it. First down. Touchdown again. The fourth down magician, Melville. Well, the best part what he does, Kevin, he holds the ball and runs with the running back. So you'll see his feet are moving. Let's see if we can see that. See how he rides him right into the line of scrimmage? And as soon as that, that linebacker committed to the fullback, oh, pull it out and go around. Noah Robb right. got a clean form tackle on the back, Russell. Unfortunately for him, Russell didn't have the ball. Here comes my favorite kicker in America. I love the way he has those arms out, the pre-snap thing. He's got a little, a little routine going on there. And he's three for three on extra points, Jonah Bowman. Jake Melville making plays on fourth down for the second time today for six. Past the midway point of the second quarter, we've had as many defensive stops as we've had rays of sunlight so far. Five drives and five touchdowns.
And Colgate caps off its third with another fourth down touchdown run from Jake Melville. Now that was just a great play. He's got some outstanding feet, vision. He makes it very difficult. In a 3-3, you've only got six guys to defend seven because you've committed your D-backs to stop in the pass. And uh, the Colgate offense has taken full advantage of that. Melville just under 90 yards already. Two touchdowns on the ground for the Colgate quarterback. But I ain't going to stop Lehigh. No. Well, you'll see. It's interesting now. Uh, Colgate is kicking from the left hash mark. So see if they try to pin him in one of the corners. Jonah Bowman will kick it toward the corner. Donovan Harris trying to get to the middle of the field, and he's blown up. You can just see that. When you pin that the kickoff return team into one of those corners, it makes it difficult for the return. And Courtney Mims, the freshman defensive back, makes the play. Worst starting field position for any team today. Lehigh's offense back, and so is Gabby on the sidelines. Hey, thanks. All right, shaking it out here. We've got Heather Young, women's lacrosse coach here at Colgate. Now, you guys are coming off a pretty great season last year. How are you getting ready for this one? Well, just trying to remind the kids that we have to make sure that even though we had such a great season, we need to keep working towards our future goals um, and make sure we're setting those goals early. Um, and really, it just our, our expectation every day we step on the field is to work 110%. Those future goals also maybe how to tackle the tough schedule you guys have coming up next season. Yeah, I mean, our um, conference schedule is extremely difficult. I mean, we play some of the top teams in the country in that schedule, so our non-conference helps us to prepare for that as well. So we kind of know, we kind of split up our, our uh, season into three segments, our first non-conference, beginning of conference, and then the end, really try to attain those goals. And, you know, you've got a little ties to the football team here, to your husband. Fun fact, is the offensive coordinator here. He said, it's not that cold. He needs to stop complaining, right? He does. He sits in the booth. He says the window's open, so it's a little cold. But it's a little different from February weather when we're outside on the sideline. How much fun is it to get to come out here and support him? It's awesome. I mean, our, our family is just tied to Colgate. Um, he was a student here as well, played football here. So it's near and dear to our heart. You can actually see the stadium from our bedroom window. So we may be a little too close at times but it's awesome to come out and support and you know my players are supporting his players and vice versa so it's a really good community that we have awesome well i'll let you get back to cheering your husband on on the sidelines kevin thanks kevin thanks to heather chris the 12 year coach here at colgate in 1997 grad right next to us right now watching his defense on a third down at six sapniski's fullback crawford is in motion four receivers set up here comes the pressure. Chapnisky's pass complete. Needed the 27 for a first down. The catch from Trevor Sakaris. And he looks to be a bit short. As you mentioned the cold weather on that last kickoff. Courtney Mims, another Floridian, made the tackle. I should say, never mind. They've given him a spot for a first down as Dan Hunt was asking for a measurement. That will not come. Back to the line quickly in Bragalone with a seam. Stood up. At the 34-yard line, Tom Bragalone continues to work the ground game for a Lehigh team that had 41 points in the first half last week against Holy Cross, its highest scoring half in 13 years. Back on the ground, Shafniski off the fake, took a shot, but gets the first down. In this drive, Lehigh has picked up the tempo. They're not spending a lot of time between snaps. Well, Lehigh's oh, offense go. Yeah, can score with the best of them. Can operate at different tempos. Andy Cohen likes to do that. Over 455 yards per game this year. Their issue has been turnovers. Last in the Patriot League at a minus 10 margin overall. Yeah, those are the things that keep coaches up at night. Because uh, that's just something that, that you can prevent. No turnovers so far today. Bragalone into Colgate territory. Bragalone's got blockers. Dub Bragalone, 62 yards. And Lehigh answers again. And Gaitlin Casey, Gaitlin Casey, number eight, he just stayed with that. Bragalone owes him a pizza after the game <laughs> for that block. And guess what? Another Floridian made the block. So Florida's being highly represented. That's a great block. Look at him. He just kept right on it. Kept contact. No clip. No blocking in the back. Great play. 
Casey the sophomore doesn't have a catch today but he makes a big contribution in the run game as Bragg alone adds his second touchdown of the afternoon. I tell the all the young receivers that I coach it's not how well you catch the ball it's how well you block it's going to make the difference whether a team is good or not. Well you had an early block from Pelletier a late block from Casey and a 62 yard scamper. We still haven't seen anything other than a touchdown to end a drive. Back to touchdown happy Hamilton each team with three drives each team with three scores and it is Colgate's turn to get the ball back after a 62 yard run from Dominic Bragalo in the Lehigh freshman running back. Well, the punters aren't doing much today, that's for sure. So hopefully at halftime. What punters? They, yeah, I know. Hopefully they keep their foot warm. They go out there with a cold foot late in the game. It's going to be tough. Lehigh hasn't even had a fourth down yet. Colgate's converted two, both for touchdowns. Mataluna from his own goal line. He's had two good returns so far. Finds space in the center. There's a flag thrown, though. Only the second penalty flag. Well, you know what that's going to be if it's on the kickoff return. Nice return by Madeline. He's a tough kid. He gets up right up in the middle there. Two times out of the end zone. When you take it out of the end zone, you better get past that 20 yard line or 25 yard line. Well, he did. The issue is right. the penalty is yeah. going to knock back sure. Colgate. And it's a spot foul, which is even worse. It's not from the end of the run, it's where the, uh, the During the return. action occurred. Illegal block in the back, receiving team, number 26. Ten yard penalty, spot foul, from the spot of the foul, first down. And now it becomes almost a 15 or 20. Let's, let's see where he got the ball to. Yeah. It's Courtney yeah. Mims who actually Sorry, made the tackle on the last yeah. kick return for Lehigh, so he comes up with one plus and one minus in his special teams grade. And Colgate will start at its own 12 with a long field ahead. Russell is the tailback. This three tailback rotation. He's had most of his snaps. And he gets the ball here. A good first step up to the 19 yard line gain of seven. And you'll see the twins formation, uh, the two receivers away from the tight end. They're being covered by three guys. So Lehigh must have great respect for those two receivers. Mataluna and Greenewald typically the two receivers. Quasi in the slot right now. And you can see it how they have three over two. Thomas Ives, the freshman, getting some run as well at the top of the screen as a slot receiver. Back to Russell, and he is ridden down from behind. The number 90. Tyler Kavinas, the sophomore. They like his motor. They like the way he fills up space, and it's 6'5", 295. That's something that might come naturally. And, you know, that's as big as any Division I defensive end. Yep. That's great size and speed by the young man from Lehigh. Third and a yard here for Colgate. Stay on the ground. And the give should be enough here as Russell springs to the 22 yard line. Again, Kavinas on the stop. It is enough for a Colgate first down. You can see how hard he comes down the line of scrimmage. It's only a matter of time for Melville pulls that ball out. How about Kavinas? No long sleeves, no gloves. Just out there with the jersey and pads right now. And he's Good made back-to-back -back stops. Watch the pass! Pass! Lehigh was looking for the pass. It's coming from Melville. Took a big hit, and what a catch! Greenewald holds it in across midfield. Melville took a shot from Cavinas again behind the play, but stood tall to complete the pass. Just goes up between, just goes high in the air to catch it at the high point. Great reception. Six foot three. Cole. One more look. Yeah, you'll see Melville just stands in the pocket. He knows he's going to get it. And here comes 90. 
and you know he's going to take it. That, that, that's tough. That, that's great maturity by a quarterback. This time it's Quaza from Melville on the deep out for a gain of eight yards. And we're sitting up here in the booth and it's easy to do that. you got a six foot five, 270 pound guy about ready to hit you and you've got to stand in there. That just, speaking of maturity, he has come a long way with that. He has risen to the occasion and Chris Young said that Yale game we saw, he had opportunities to make plays at the end of the game. He didn't make them, he started to make them now. It's nice to be repetitive, but that's the hardest thing to teach a quarterback. You have to stand in there and take it. Good. You got 80. You got 80. Over. You got Second and two as Colgate has moved from its own 12 to the 39 of Lehigh. And Melville is free again. He has a blocker. It's Holland, the running back. Melville is just shy of the end zone. And just what we talked about, right, with Cavinas, sooner or later, Melville was going to get him. And it didn't take that much longer before he figured him out. And that's the patience. You have to let that defensive end make a couple of tackles for a yard or two game. 38 yards, here's the end, with Holland out as a blocker. And it was Noah Robb to get him. That's a good call by the officials. He's just shy inside the one. Well, Lehigh takes its first time out. And you may as well here, if Colgate scores quickly, you can get the ball back. <laughs> Let's take one more look at this yeah. front of 38. Let's see it from the start, and you'll see it. He's looking right at Cavinas, and 90 came down too hard. Melville pulls the ball out, gets the corner, and just misses the end zone. Great play. Well, the play is being reviewed. When we were last here, we did not have this capability in Colgate. But the folks here can now review the play, and we'll take one more look as well. So what do we stand for? Let's see where, it's hard to see where the advancement of the ball is. And the knees are down. And yeah, he's definitely yeah. down shy of the goal line. What an effort, though. <laughs> And a couple of good blocks. You see Matt Aluna pulling his hands up. Didn't want to get penalized. Yep. So the new instant replay center in here for Patriot League play. We'll look at Melville. Driven down by Noah Robb from behind. Yeah, with a lot on the line, you know, I, I am a fan of, of replay. I, I like it when they get it right. A chance to get the play right. And Michael Seacrest's official announcement tells us that it is indeed a first down inside the one. Boy, what a difference two seasons, or, or one season makes, a difference between two seasons. Last year, Colgate and Lehigh won a combined eight games. Two perennial Patriot League powers combined for 17 Patriot League titles in the last few decades. And here they are this year in a slugfest that could determine the league championship. It will if Colgate wins. Demetrius Russell, the tailback from inside the one. Melville gives to Russell. He's got it. Touchdown, Colgate. It's fourth in a row. You know, the ups and downs of the Patriot League are really based on the fact that you have to be an outstanding student first. You're not going to get into those schools. They're difficult. So you're going to have your up and down years. And Colgate. They just powered him. Nice drive. Keep your head down. Get across that goal line. And we have a scoring fest going on today, huh? 17th career touchdown for Russell. The seventh straight touchdown drive to begin the game. And Bowman, four for four, an extra points. Didn't realize that we'd be seeing the 99 St. Louis Rams against the 07 Patriots today. One more look at the touchdown plunge. Russell, all Patriot League third teamer two years ago as a sophomore. He had nine touchdowns, and he signifies the unselfishness of this running back court. Dan Hunt says John Wilkins, James Holland, and Russell, they could all be 
on another team, the feature guy, they could be a 1,000 yard rusher. Neither of them has more than 450 on the year coming in. They're unselfish, but and they've each made contributions today. If you're going to win championships, everybody must sacrifice. You have to be unselfish. There's no way around it. So these three guys obviously get along. They, they all seem to be happy. They're all running hard when they get their opportunity. Fresh legs in the backfield. Russell and Holland with touchdowns today. Melville with two touchdowns. And all seven scores so far have been rushing touchdowns. Colgate is just shy of 200 rush yards already in the game. Lehigh just shy of 140. And the Mountain Hawks will start this drive after a touchback as Harris takes a knee. So 129 to go, which in this game is no big feat the way that Lehigh's moved the ball. Would, would you expect to see a little bit more passing here considering the time limit? The one thing if I'm Lehigh I don't want to do is give up the turnover here. Play smart, do your offense, do what you've been doing. You know, if you come away a one touchdown short going into halftime, it's no big deal. Lehigh will get the ball to start the half, second half. You just don't want to go in two scores. So just be smart. Do your offense. I'd be giving it to 32, though. Now he's out of the game right oh, now. Uh, Nana uh, Amankwa uh, Aye yeah. grew up in Ghana is the tailback. Shafniski, a little fumble with a reception of his snap there. Gets it out to Sakaras for a quick hitter and a gain of five, stopping the clock at 124. Trevor Sakaris in the slot, his third catch. Again, just a little quick pass, get it up the field and get out of bounds. And again, Colgate's given up that same play here to the bottom of the screen. You'll see that safety. He's 12 yards off that receiver. And Joe Figueroa is well back at the 42-yard line. I just don't want to give up the score, but you may find out that it's a hole. And there he is. Again, Sakaris hit hard by Tyler Castillo, isn't up for a first down, yep. so the clock will stop momentarily. A little zone defense by Colgate. Number 10, the, the cornerback, just stayed right at home. Yeah, and Shapniski oh. here's got Pelletier, but ruling is incomplete. The officials throw his hat out, oh, Pelletier wow. was out of bounds. Well, he may have been in bounds when he caught it, but if he went out of bounds, he can't yes. be the first guy to touch it. So I don't know what it is. We'll see here on the replay. See, he hey, did. He was coming from out of bounds. Yeah, he can't be the unless he's knocked out of bounds. He can't be the first man to touch the ball. You wonder if that pass was. Intended for Pelletier the whole way. It sailed over the head of the first receiver. Well, it Derek was. Not. You'll see the Colgate cornerback is playing zone. So by taking the inside receiver coming out, that freezes the cornerback. He gives a nice soft zone between the receiver and, and the safety. Shapnisky now looking definitively for not, and he missed him to set up a third down. So a third and ten, a rare third down for Lehigh. I've seen neither teams use any screens in this offense. Maybe time for one here. It's classic on third and long. For receivers, Amankwa Aye, the running back. Shapniski's got to get rid of it quickly. It's dropped in and out of the hands of Gatlin <laughs> Casey. Right. And yes, Virginia, there is a punter. Austin Devine will come on to kick it away. Hopefully he's kept that foot warm today. Seven touchdown drives in a row, and finally, unless there is a fake punt, we're going to see a stop. A low kick here for Devine in the direction of Hardegree, and he'll just get out of the way. And that touch to Lehigh player, so Colgate can pick it up now. No, they will not. Touches a Lehigh player, you can pick it up and, and run with it, not worry about losing a fumble. But Colgate will play it safe. 
And with 53 seconds remaining in the half. Let's go. Be a fifth drive for Colgate. Here's how it's gone so far for the Raiders. That last drive, the longest one and the shortest place. All over 50 yards, so they, they haven't been playing with a short field. The eyes made it difficult, but obviously the whole game made it a little easier than it uh, appears to be here. Colgate at its own 18. Three seconds. Just have the full complement of timeouts. Melville looking to throw. Has time. Over the middle. And Madalena couldn't reel it in. Looking for a flag. And he won't get one. Coverage was tightly knit from Evan Harvey. That was pretty good time. I know the home fans don't think so, but they're both entitled to the ball when it's in the air. That, that's the key, was he going for the ball or the man? Nice pass over the middle. And, uh, you know, that wasn't any interference. He was going for the ball. Harvey, a reserve linebacker. They say he'd be a safety on most other teams and was essentially playing safety there. Back to the ground and Russell. Ball comes loose and Lehigh's got it. Well, 42 seconds. They're inside the 25. You can have some shots at this end zone. We talked about turnovers yeah. early. That could be costly. That is an absolute heartbreaker at the end of the half. For the moment, we'll see if Colgate's defense can try and come up with a stop again. This got ripped out. The line, uh, number 40, loud, just pulled it out. You know, coaches talk all the time about ball security. You'll hear it at every level, how important ball security is. Matthew Laub against Colgate last year had nine tackles, two sacks, and his first career interception. And he comes up with a key play again versus the Raiders. Bragalone is back in the backfield at the 24-yard line of Colgate. Two timeouts for Lehigh. Chapnisky in the face oh. of pressure, and Pelletier couldn't hang on. <laughs> Pelletier, I think the referee helped there in that play. The umpire in the middle of the field there kind of created, he had to alter his path, his, uh, his route. Made it more difficult to catch. And sometimes receivers will run at the at the referee trying to pick the defender off. Four receivers for Chapnisky. Lots of time, he'll scramble. Gets around Hardegree and gets the sideline for a first down with 32 seconds remaining. Did a little tippy toe at the end to get a couple more yards. He's a competitor, you can see that. First down, you got 32 seconds. You're gonna get four shots into the end zone here. At least three, maybe That's get a field goal. If Lehigh need that. needs that many. Yeah. Well. Gain of 13, by the way, on that run. And they have the chance to get another first down at the one, so. Already 28 first downs and a half. Underneath, caught, and a touchdown, Sasha Kelsey. And Lehigh makes Colgate's turnover pay. Again, zone defense are just going to have those little crossing routes. They pick the receiver. 80 came underneath. The two slots crossed over the middle. One becomes free for the touchdown. Very good play. Well, it took until our eighth touchdown to get a passing touchdown. Yeah. It's 11 yards to Kelsey, his third of the year. And Ed Mish's extra point will tie it if good. It was now, hold kick, all good. I think there was about a five yard pass and a 10 yard run, maybe. A little long handoff. More look at the score to Kelsey. Sold in two today for Lehigh. And again, with Lehigh getting the ball first to begin the second half, 
That Colgate turnover looms massively large over this game right now. Dan Hunt knows it. Oh, and 534 total yards in the first half already. 24 of them on that drive. Mm, that's a, uh, well, I'm sure that the defensive coordinators will have those uh, whiteboards flying at halftime. There'll be a lot of X's and O's going on in there. I thought you meant flying, i.e., oh. thrown <laughs> against the well, that, walls. That, Nothing that, on here works. <laughs> that I'm might happen too. It wouldn't be the first time. Base with a short kick, Colgate. It's a big hit here on the return from Dan Grosso, the junior fullback. And the Raiders are at their own 33-yard line. Now you have three timeouts. Do you take a shot here, or are you scarred from the previous turnovers? Yeah. You know, you have to have short memory if you're going to be a good football team. I'd be doing the same things I've been doing. No reason to think that Melville can't break a big one. Bowman's long of, is 39 yards and a field goal. And it does not look like Colgate is going to worry no. about that. This is the shotgun kneel down formation, essentially. And you don't have to make another snap, so they're going in. What a first half. If you expected this, you're either clairvoyant or you're a good liar. Eight touchdowns in the first half. <laughs> Absolutely, it is. It is an offensive day here in Hamilton. And Lehigh and Colgate are all tied up. Bound to Gabby on the sidelines. Hey, thanks, Kevin. All right, Coach Hunt, tough turnover right there at the very end. What do you say to your guys now heading into the second? Half? Well, I just say that you know we, we were trying to get points. We're trying to be aggressive there, and, and it was a kind of a fluke play. The nose guard hit the ball out, and you know I, we just the defense has to respond there. You know, we're, we're not, right now we're playing pretty good on offense. We're not playing great on defense. Um, we get we make a little change at half here. We get somebody back for the second half, and hopefully defense we have to stop the run in the second half. High scoring game so far. Lehigh has found a way to answer every single time. How do you guys stay on top? Yeah, it's uh, well, we got to answer back. You know, that's the thing. It's, it's kind of tough right now. They get the ball coming out of half, so uh, it's, it's going to be a big possession defensively. Hopefully, we can get a stop and kind of get the point swing back in our favor. All right, great. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you, Gabby. Dan Hunnell have some words for his defense. Offense so far is so good. We're 28 apiece for that key turnover haunting the Raiders at the half. Well, it's been quite an afternoon with the Patriot League Championship on the line. Colgate and Lehigh have engaged in an offensive slugfest. Four touchdowns aside, the Lehigh Mountain Hawks will get the ball first to begin the second half. Kevin Brown joined by Paul Seely in the booth. Gabrielle Lucivero on the sidelines, thanks to Pete Gaines and our Time, time Warner crew for uh, braving the cold and the wind and the occasional snow today. All right, Paul, first half, uh, first of all, here's Jake Melville and Colgate. Colgate offense versus Lehigh defense. What has gone well for the Raiders? Well, everything's gone well for the Raiders. You know, they've, they've passed well. They The pressure, a lot of third down conversions. Uh, that, that's the big thing that they've, when they've needed to get the yardage that they needed, they got it. You know, what really looms, the, the really elephant in the room here is going to be a, if Lehigh wins the three-way tie. Because the tiebreaker goes, I believe, and I've asked downstairs, it goes to the non-participant, uh, the ADs voting that's on. That's right. If there, is, that, a, if there is a three-way well, tie. With that three-way tie. So, so what happens is you're going to have three good teams, and it's going to be decided like a beauty contest. It's not going to be decided on the field. There is no tiebreakers, point differentials that we can find. So this second half, is, is this is going to be a, a rock'em, sock'em half here. Gabby, you've been down on the field the whole time, uh, braving the elements, unlike us. Although, well, we are braving it a little bit. Uh, what's your vantage point so far the first half? Well, right now, there's just a lot of energy on the field. Colgate right here, fired up. Now, I think the one thing that, you know, we were expecting the Lehigh offense to come out firing, but maybe not so much. Colgate looking more to play on the defensive side of things. But right now, just a high-scoring game, and they're fired up to just play some football and, and get things moving. Well, Colgate only had 28 last week, uh, and the entire game in the win at Lafayette. And they were down 13-0 to Lafayette early on. The Patriot League right now could be decided by this game. Fordham is in yep. the midst of a game with Georgetown right now. 
if Fordham wins that, then the Rams are done in conference play for the year, and they would be locked in at one loss. So here's how you get a three-way tie. Fordham wins. Lehigh wins this game, and Lehigh and Colgate win next week. That's how you get the three-way tie. Three-way tie. So if Colgate wins, even if Colgate wins and loses next week, then Colgate and Fordham would have one loss each, and Colgate beat Fordham here a couple of weeks ago. Big upset. Yeah. So and I'll tell you Lehigh's got to play Lafayette next week, and you know those uh, yeah, all-time yeah. rivalry games are great. So there's a lot of uh, lot of Patriot League drama still left. Lehigh will start in the return by Chris Rule at tight end. Just shy of its own 30-yard line. And that Lehigh Lafayette game next week will be the 151st edition of the meeting. Last year was in Yankee Stadium. It was a, a really neat event. This year, we'll be back in Lafayette. They'll drop the seating capacity from the 40s to about 13,000, but should be no less of a great environment. And Lafayette's won the last two outings. So, yep. uh, so here's Nick Shapnisky so far. He's played every snap for Lehigh. Brad Mays. Patriot League Offensive Player of the Week last week. The freshman quarterback has not played one snap. First play, Dom Bragalone on the run. A convoy of Colgate tacklers get him after a gain of seven. Bragalone's first half ball, 11 carries, 109 yards and two touchdowns. What impressed you about him? Everything. For a freshman, his vision. His vision in his feet. He reads the blocks well. Very patient on the long touchdown. Let the blocker set up in front of him before he made it. He's got great acceleration. You're not going to set a, a, a Pennsylvania State uh, record without being an outstanding football player. Shapnisky on the fake here, trying to get around Morgan. Spins his way free from field and is finally cut under as Chris Morgan, the junior, blew that play up. Gain of two, third and a yard upcoming. This could be a big stop for Colgate right here. Third down conversions have been a problem for both teams today with only one punt. And the tackle ultimately made by Keon Washington, the reserve safety. Chapnisky on a third down to the wide side has it up for the first down. There have been holes yep. everywhere on the field. Credit to these offensive <laughs> lines so far. You know, on a spread defense, on a spread offense, you're going to create those holes by formation. There's just nothing you can do about it. You have to have great open field tackling by those linebackers and defense. Just got to look at Andy Cohen. Three Patriot League titles in his first nine years, a record of 40 and 18 in the league. Shapnisky off the fake. Get down, get down. Passes a one hopper, shy of Pelletier. That's intended for Troy Pelletier. Just to roll right, they pulled the lineman, gave him some time, but Shafniski just didn't set his feet. He tried to use his arm, and it just fell a yard short, a little skip pass. Shafniski from the Lehigh Valley, a junior at a Whitehall, Pennsylvania. Got a win last season against Colgate. It's 19 of 22, a touchdown, and 74 rushing yards last year versus the Raiders. Bragalone, not much. It's a third and long coming up for Colgate, uh, for Lehigh, I should say, after the pickup of only two for Bragalo. Now you'll see here at the bottom of the screen, you have three receivers for Lehigh, and you'll see the Colgate defense. They're only covering them with two. And now they bring the third guy over. Last time they didn't have the third defender over there, and that uh, bubble screen was wide open. Pelletier is alone at the top of the screen. Shapnisky looking his way. Pelletier has got the first down. Shapnisky looked for Pelletier the whole time. Right from the snap of the ball. Obviously, that was uh, the corner back there was playing off. So what they call a, a soft corner. He's giving you a lot of green. It's going to be a stop or a quick out. He looked at him right from the start. Number 10 was playing soft, giving him the underneath, and they took it. Is that where you'd like to see Colgate gamble? Yes, exactly. There's a time where you let, let them see it before the snap and then do something after the snap that they're not ready for. So, you, know, you, you have to gamble here today if you're going to win the game. Three yards for Bragalone and a first down. Lehigh is not a team that hits too many big plays. Yesterday, or, or not yesterday, but last week in their last game, 
They had a 61 yard touchdown on the opening play to Derek Knott. But other than that, it's a team that runs five, 10 yard outs normally. So look at the numbers for Bragg alone. And Colgate, as you've noted, has been giving them that soft coverage. Shapnisky's taken advantage time and time again. Bragg alone. Not much here as Charles Carney rode him from behind. 245 pound junior linebacker. Kind of Gabby on the sidelines. Hey, thanks, Kevin. You know what? A big milestone right now for Troy Pelletier. He just hit with that reception of 12 yards. He just hit a milestone of 1,500 yards receiving. So he came into this game looking for 32 more. So while Colgate has been passing, 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 and, uh, you know, it's it's Lehigh all the way. So Pelletier finding uh, a nice milestone for himself just now. Gabby, thank you. And here's Shapnisky on a third down. He has the sideline and enough for a first down for Lehigh to extend the drive. And you'll see uh, yeah, 98, the defensive end came down on the dive. Shafnisky eyeballed him right from the start, pulled the ball out. Bo both quarterbacks are very, very good at doing this. So sooner or later, you have to change up your assignment to create that problem for the offense. Well, it's at the 33 of Colgate on the first drive of the second half for Lehigh. Amakwa Aye, the running back. Shapnisky looking for Derek Knott. Incomplete with Morgan in coverage. Trying to fit it in for the five foot nine inch senior. That was great coverage by Chris Morgan. Step for step. That would have taken an absolutely perfect pass. Great defense. Morgan moved from safety to corner at the beginning of the year when Adam Bridgeforth, one of their cornerbacks, got hurt. Then with the move of Pat Afrie to the line, Morgan has stepped in to become an outside linebacker. He's been in coverage most of the day today. Here is Amankwa Aye, his first carry. And it's a pickup of three yards for the sophomore out of Silver Spring, Maryland. Last week of 16 carries, Nana Amankwa Aye. There are the numbers for the sophomore, who was a walk-on last year, one of the final players added to the roster. And he's been their secondary running back the last two weeks. Third and seven for the Mountain Hawks. First drive of the second half. Pelletier top of the screen with tight coverage. Shapnisky had a free A behind, finds Bregolone in the flat. A block from Casey springs him free for a first down. You know, the, he, 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 maybe we, hopefully we can get a replay. You should, the left guard for Lehigh gave that play away. Look at the left guard. He is sitting back on his heels, just telling the defense going to be a pass. He was already in the backfield, uh, almost in the backfield from the start. You got to be able to read those keys. Now Shabnisky under siege, and he'll go down. You know, we talk about all the time. When the offensive line is called daylight under your heels, when those heels are flat on the ground, it's usually a pass or a pull by that player. So does Colgate need to make a better snap decision, notice that, and react accordingly? Well, you know, it, it's certainly a, a, a key Hopefully they are reading it. Maybe they just didn't perform after the read. Loss of two on the play. Cameron Buttermore was in. Second and 12. Back to Bragalone, and he's knocked down. Right near the line of scrimmage. Alex Campbell and Brett Field, the two defensive linemen, help blow up that play, and Lehigh is set up with a long third down. Third down and 12 officially. Bragalone out of the game. Crawford, the fullback in the backfield. An extra tight end, Drew Paulson to the right of the formation. Chapmisky fires it to Pelletier. Got the cutback. Needs the three for a first down. He won't get there. He's marked down at the six, a few yards shy. 
I don't see any movement here on the Lehigh sideline for that kicker coming out. Ed Mish. Oh, there they go. Stays on the sideline. Nope, just yep, a couple nope. of tight ends. He has got to go for it here. And you can understand this. Well, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm a big fan of play action to the tight ends down here. You bring in those big guys, looks like the run. Chris Rule, Zach Buckland are the two extra tight ends. Fourth down and about three and a half, officially four. Crawford, the fullback, as a blocker for Shapnisky. Trying to cut it back, and down he goes. Colgate blows it up. Alex Campbell makes the stop. Just good penetration by the, uh, the men in maroon. Nice open field tackling. They all stayed on. Great pursuit. That's what you need down there. No, you can't take a playoff down there and expect to make the stop. There's a lot of bending there, Paul, from the Colgate defense. No break. They finally make a play. And the Raiders get the ball back at their own eight-yard line. Jake Melville back in the shotgun. Demetrius Russell still in the game despite that fumble at the end of the first half. And Melville will keep it off the edge. A short gain as he was chased from behind and finally tackled from ahead by Randall Lawson. Let's return to the sidelines and Gabby Lucivero. Thanks, Kevin. I'm here with Matt Langle, and he's the head coach of the men's basketball. And you guys had a pretty big win last night to open up your season at George Mason. It was. It was great. Uh, I think it's hard to win in college basketball on the road. And when you go and, and do it at an Atlantic 10 opponent, uh, George Mason, to start the year with an inexperienced group that we have, we were, we were really thrilled about the outcome. And you have your home opener coming up on Monday night. How excited are you just to get get playing again and start the season? Yeah, I think our guys are, are the most excited. Coaches like practice and, and the players like to play. And I think they uh, are, are guys who haven't been out there a lot. So got some great experience uh, last night. And, uh, and they're really chomping at the bit to, to keep it going and to play at home in front of in front of their friends and, and their crowd. Well, now last season, a second place finish in the Patriot League. So how hungry are your guys to get back at it and just to prove themselves this year? Uh, the, the experienced guys, the Austin Tillotson and Alex Ramona, I think they've carried, carried on the culture that existed from that team. And now the, the younger guys have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder and want to prove a point to the rest of the league and to other people who maybe think that we, we graduated all of our talent and would have a struggle this year that uh, they're ready to step in and take advantage of the opportunity at hand. Well, about those, you know, experienced guys, what are some of the things that they're really bringing to the table this year? I think the leadership comes in many ways, but the communication, the togetherness, the uh, attention to detail, the discipline that it takes on a, on a daily basis, not just on game night, but practice every day, you know, working on your game individually, constantly trying to get better, or some things that they've experienced in their careers, and, and they're showing the younger guys and the, the less experienced guys the, the importance of those, those intangible factors. All right, great. Well, congratulations on your win last night, and best of luck moving forward. It sounds like you guys have a lot of experience going ahead. What about that, Kevin? Gabby, thank you. It's, it's a fun Colgate basketball team to watch, and this is not great for Colgate. Jake Melville um, looks like a cramp here. Hopefully that's all it is. That seems to be what's going on right now. He's getting stretched out, but you never want to see this from Melville, who has been Colgate's whole offense today. Well, he's got to come out for a play. So on second and long, uh, with an inexperienced quarterback who, who hasn't taken one snap today. And there he is. That's Brett Mooney, the backup. And Brett played quite a bit last year because Melville had mono and missed a few games. Mooney in five games last year threw for 644 yards a touchdown. He was intercepted seven times. And you're going to give him a play that he can be successful at running right now. So I would look for uh, Colgate to be a little conservative on this play. So there is Melville. He can walk off under his own power. Brett Mooney last year against Lehigh, 9 out of 16, 176 yards, but he was picked off twice. Out of West Dundee, Illinois. And with the Patriot League title in Colgate's control here, uh, yeah, yeah. A win and the Raiders are champs. You have Mooney, the backup quarterback, in for 
what will be at least one play and likely more as Melville is continually stretched out. But I tell you, this is the hardest position in all of football. Second team quarterback coming in. It's not like a pitcher gets to go warm up for a while. A couple of throws on the sideline, maybe. That's it. That's it. On the second down and seven. Mooney's first snap today. He'll hand it off for Russell with a C. And a first down for Demetrius Russell. That was an ac excellent offensive line play right there. You know, coming in, knowing full well, you're going to have to run the ball. Uh, Lehigh knew they had to run the ball. Nice push. Just a counter with the tight end come back on the other side of the ball. Seals off that defensive end. Nice play. 17 yards, the tackle from Cody Condis. Mooney will keep it this time. He's going to run a little bit, and he's upended. Hit right near the knee. Mooney is not the runner that Melville is. But this is Colgate's offense, and if you want to run it, you have to be a quarterback that can do both. I'm sure he's got some, uh, you know, skills where he wouldn't be here, that's for sure. And they have confidence in him. No, I just don't make mistakes here. The tailback is Russell here. Thomas Ives, a freshman receiver in the slot, as Russell moves forward for a gain of two. This is a, you know, all, all third downs are big plays, but this one especially because now you're in a position where are you going to throw the ball? What safe play can you throw it? We haven't seen a screen all day. This may be a time for Colgate to pull one out of the hat. and Because they're going to get a rush here by Lehigh's defense. You can see the linebacker creeping up. Madaluna, Ives, and Greenewald. Top to bottom, the wide receivers. Quasi in at a tight end spot. Mooney off the drop back. Going for the freshman, Ives, and it's hit it out of his hands. McCluskey, the freshman in coverage, and Ives couldn't hang on. Uh, that, that pass was as good. Put it on the mark. You, your receiver's got to help you out. Off, they gave him a lot of time, st stayed in the pocket, and this ball hit him right in the hands. You've got to make that catch. For the first time, Nico Armiento, Colgate's punter, is out, and he's a good one. One of a couple of Armientos the last few years. Brother Mike, one of the top defensive players the last few years. Armiento's punt is fumbled. Colgate football. Recovered by the Raiders and Kyle Dieter, the tackles leader. That's a big play. Turnovers today. We talked about it early, Kevin, you know. And it just that uh, he just miscalculated that. Uh, he should have called for a fair catch. That would have held some of those guys off. He might have been able to recover as it. And you're trying to make big plays in big games. And Melville is back after the fumble by Luke Cristiano, the freshman punt returner. Helmet and hands on the sidelines. First turnover for Lehigh. Melville back to operate the offense. Russell is taking every snap at tailback here in the half. Back to Russell. Driving the feet, but being thrown back. Pushed by Noah Robb, the senior inside linebacker. Well, Lehigh said it. Andy Cohen told us that turnovers were such a key to his team, something that's plagued them all year. That's their 22nd in 10 games. And it's given Colgate new life here late in the third quarter. Pressure picked up with the ball, batted down. Greg Palma, his second deflection, and this one, Melville didn't catch. <laughs> now that was better, right to the ground. Stayed right in the passing lane, just what we talked about earlier. If you can't get to the quarterback, try to stay in between him, read his eyes. 
maneuver your body in between the quarterback and, and where he's looking. And he just looked the whole time, and that big old paw got right up there. Last week he had two sacks. This week hasn't gotten to the quarterback, but he has two deflections. Third and long with Greenewald to load at the bottom of the screen. No hold despite the contact. And Melville's pass is incomplete. Yeah, I think 74 on the offensive tackle there for uh, Siegel got away with a little bit there. I'm sure the Lehigh coaches are jumping in the booth next to us. Well, now there's a flag late. It came in on the front of the Colgate sideline. Roughing the passer, defense oh. number five. 15 yard power to the previous spot, automatic, first down. Colton Caslow, the defensive leader. Now, th that's as bad as a turnover down here. With the score tied at the, almost the end of the third quarter. I'm sure Coach Kona have a few words. And again, that's like that late hit in the first half. Anything yeah. that's close with the quarterback. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, it's, uh, and the referees are told to do that. Yeah, they're instructed to safety first. Ball up at Lehigh, 18. New life for the Raiders. They get the third down conversion via penalty. Give to James Holland on the ground. Now, despite the penalty, what do you like about Lehigh's defense here in the second half? Well, they, they've stiffened up. They played hard. Um, you know, they, they didn't uh, they didn't bother heads, and, and that's important. They're, they're just playing as hard as they can in making plays. Mm -hmm. Mountain Hawks gave up 38 a week ago to Holy Cross. A couple of those scores were in garbage time, in fairness. Not the strength of their team. They allowed more than 33 points per game on the year. Russell's wide open out of the backfield. Melville finds him, and he's tripped up. Good closing speed for the junior Brandon Leakes out of Simpsonville, South Carolina. Melville just held the ball a little too long. If he had gotten the ball sooner to his running back, I think he'd have gotten a few more yards. He's open right now, and he waits, he's patient, and then he dumps it off on the final check down. But by that time, the defense is closing on you. Now, I like to see fast guys with the, the, the ball in their hand a little bit quicker. Andy Cohen mentioned that Leakes is a good form tackler. It comes to fruition there. A gain of four yards to set up third down. Melville keeps it, needs the nine, darts back, lunges, is right near the nine with Caslow closing for the tackle. He is shy by a few inches. Maybe a half yard. Mm. With the fourth down. quarter looming, are they going to take the points? No, it doesn't look like it. I might take the points here, Kevin. Well, Colgate is confident in its ability to get a half a yard. The running back is Russell. Raiders have hit two fourth downs for touchdowns today. Russell, first down, and he's in. They did it again. That's just a nice straight ahead, downhill play. At that time, it was just good old fashioned football. Three fourth downs, and not only three conversions, Paul, but three touchdowns on fourth down plays, and the Raiders are back in front by seven. Some might say take the points. Colgate says we'll take all seven. Nine yards and a fourth down play. Demetrius Russell runs in Colgate's fifth touchdown. All of them on the ground for the Raiders, where the Patriot League's rushing leaders, 213.8 yards 
on the ground per game coming in there at 244 this afternoon. Again, the stakes are Colgate wins. It wins the Patriot League for the first time since 2012. It would be the Raiders' eighth to uh, title total, or total title, other way around. Lehigh has 10 Patriot League championships, the most of any school. If they win, they and Colgate are tied in the loss column. The return Donovan Harris, and he has stood up on a hit by T.J. Hole. Mountain Hawks football when we return late in the third quarter. Well, after a first half that uh, saw 56 combined points, only seven so far. With a minute 42 to go in this third quarter to start the second half. Troy Pelletier has a quick hitter with a flag thrown for Lehigh. We'll check the penalty. And after we check the penalty, we'll check in with Gabby back on the sidelines. But first, this flag is a penalty like against holding. Lehigh. Yeah, it's in that area. I'm sure they're wide receiver. That's a tough block to hold. Or, or not to hold, I should say. Yeah. Holding. Moving back. Yep. Offense, number eight. Ten-yard penalty from the end of the run. Repeat, first down. It's Gatlin yeah. Casey who's made so many good blocks that you've highlighted yep. so far today. In, in those bubble screen. Now let's go to Gabby. Hey, thanks, Kevin. All right. You know, so Colgate has been really heavy on the running game this game, but for Lehigh, balance is the key for them. When they have a difference of less than 100 yards between net rushing and, and passing totals, well, they're 5 and 0. Oh, and right now, this game, they are just at uh, 117 passing and 176 rushing. So they're within that margin. So we we'll have to see if that statistic holds true today. Gabby, thank you. As Chef Niski adds to the rushing here, it's a, it's a good point when Lehigh's been out of whack this year in terms of rush versus pass. They've lost. They've been pretty balanced today. Chef Niski, more of a running quarterback, but has kept Colgate honest with his arm. Oh. They've done a real good job today offensively. Got most of the yards back after the penalty. On a second down, Sikaris. Those nice closing speed by the Colgate defense. Those little bubble screens Prepared are great. Sikaris and if you're not careful, and it's really the quarterback reading that when he comes to the line of scrimmage. Morgan, a hard agree, and Figueroa to tackle. Yeah, if, if those safeties are off, they're going to throw it. And this is turning into the cliche bowl about the least amount of turnovers, who scores, last wins. Good, solid football game today here in Hamilton. Well, I'm sure sponsors are lighting up to the cliche bowl. Yeah. <laughs> Third and short. It's a man, Bragalone, the yeah. freshman who has it up for a first down. You can't say enough about him. I'll give you one. Oh, one. You give you one stat. Sorry, here, Paul. It's okay. Lehigh under Andy Cohen, 55 and 23 when they run for 100 yards. 12 and 22 when they're under 100. They're at 187 right now, but they're down seven. Fourth quarter coming up. 54th all-time meeting between Colgate and Lehigh is headed to the fourth quarter with the Raiders ahead by seven. 15 minutes away from the Patriot League championship. Lehigh football as we look at our numbers through three quarters. Kevin Brown and Paul Seeley with you in the booth. Gabrielle Lucivero, sideline level. And our retired team here at Time Warner Cable Sports Channel. Thrilled to be covering this late season high stakes matchup. Colgate 0 and 3 to 5 and 4 and a chance to win the league. Hey, it's pretty even right now and uh, fourth quarter football championship on the line. Chapniski gets away from Carney and does dive forward for a yard. Nice job by the junior Chapniski who after last week only playing a handful of snaps has been on the field for every offensive play. Yards and a touchdown on the ground. A second down and nine. Dom Bragalone driven backwards. Cameron Buttermore, the senior captain, led the charge. He'll be five yards shy of a first down. And the guys just got to be patient. You know, they don't have to win the game right now. 
No, they don't have to panic right now. There's a lot of time on this clock. I'm sure the time, I haven't seen the time of possession, but I would assume that it's probably pretty close given the score. Both gonna, teams have taken long drives. Yeah, Get a sustained level of these touchdown drives. Third down, a 3A off the edge. Shapnisky, deep ball, it's caught. He had a lot of time to throw. Colgate's got to put a little more pressure on him. And that zone defense, sooner or later, somebody's going to be open on it. There's just too much green to cover. It was Sasha Kelsey for his third catch. It's the man with a touchdown to end the first half. Just laid it right out in front of him. Let the big guy catch it. Six foot, 185 pounder used his body well in front of the 5'7 sophomore Washington. Japnisky again, looking to the air, and Pelletier couldn't hang on, a bit underthrown. <laughs> you gotta make those throws. That was just underthrown. Pelletier is wide open at the 10 yard line. Too much arm. Shafniski's got to step into that throw, use his legs. That's what really gives you the great arm strength, as funny as that may sound. Got to step more into it, and it just fell short. Pelletier lined up in the slot on the second down. Seven on the line of scrimmage, blocking for Bragalone. He stumbles his way to the 26. And it's another chance for Colgate's defense to make a play on a third down. Now, so far, Lee I is using on third down. They, they're looking at, they have two downs to make the first down. Certainly don't think you're gonna see a field goal at this point unless it's a fourth down and forever. No, but you want to put points on the board in the fourth quarter. I mean, a touchdown will win it. I mean, the field goal could win it. You, you get the field goal first or wait till you tie it to get the field goal. Third down, Bragalone with space up the middle, a first down, and pushed forward for an extra couple. He needed the 20. He ends up being powered across the 15 for a gain of 12. No, I'm one that subscribes to this. It's, it's, you don't go with the play, you go with the player. And Bragalone right now is just the hottest back on this field. Up to 148 yards, only 20 carries. He's back in there. Defeat him again? Well, look at <laughs> It's the player, not the play. No block here. Chapnisky incomplete. Casey, the intended target underneath. Coverage provided by Ty McCollum with that two interception game last week. It's their leader in interceptions and passes broken up, McCollum. And when you run the spread offense, you get inside the 20 like they are. You don't have as much field to work with. So the defense can be way more patient. They're going to come to you. There's no, you can't, you know, it's much more difficult to get beat deep when you're inside in the red zone. You saw that on the turnover on downs in the third quarter by Lehigh. Bragalone again. Didn't get a good burst there behind him. And Afrie closes the hole. Pat Afrie has been such a good pass rusher. When they moved into defensive end, it wasn't sure how he'd be in the run game, but they've been very pleased with his play. Just, I'm trying to get the number, uh, I believe it was 62. Campbell, he stuffed the hole. He's the reason why the play didn't work. And then the linebackers and ends can come down and make the tackle. Great play by the defensive tackle. Stuffing that hole. 275 pound nose guard. Sets up a third down and long. Lehigh needs the four. Shapnisky going for Pelletier. It's a touchdown. Pelletier's fifth catch of the afternoon is his 69th of the season and his seventh score. Just over the outstretched hands of the linebacker.
Pelletier's 14th career touchdown, and we are tied again. Trey Pelletier is waiting to extend his streak of five plus catches. His eighth straight game with five catches, and number five is sweet. We're tied in Colgate. Lehigh has not led in this game, but the Mountain Hawks have answered all of Colgate's touchdowns with a touchdown of their own. Back and forth as we take a look at the Colgate class of 2031. Incomplete. You know, it's, it's going to sound funny. It, it's going to come down to a, a great defensive play since we've had 10 touchdowns, not many defensive plays. But sooner or later, it's, that is what's going to happen. One turnover on each team. Both the turnovers have led to points. And the Mountain Hawks finish off a long drive here. The touchdown catch by Pelletier. He's 14th in two seasons with Lehigh. John Mataluna on the kick return. Mataluna ripped down across the 30-yard line by Jake Scott, the freshman. One Lehigh player is slow to get up behind the play is Luke Cristiano, the freshman. He's the punt returner who fumbled the ball earlier, so he limps off the field. Bottom left of your screen right there. All right, Colgate football, and the Raiders with a touchdown in the second half. From a nine-yard Demetrius Russell run. Is right Lehigh going to change defensively? No, nope, ne neither one are going to change right now. You're just going to play what you've been doing, especially on offense. I'd like to see a gamble sooner or later by somebody on defense. I think that might be the, uh, the, game, the play that wins the game. But right now, Colgate is going to do what they've been doing. Demetrius Russell alongside Melville. Russell has the football. And a quick hit by Noah Robb. Rob, who has bounced up and down from the secondary to the linebacking core and has settled in as a senior linebacker, has started to make his presence a little more felt in this second half. Overall, Lee's got some pretty good size on defense. They do. They're linebackers. They're, they're front six guys. Let's go, defense! Let's go, D! Big stop, D! Big stop! Only a yard on that first down play. Melville oh. against a four-man rush. Finds Mataluna. First down into Lehigh territory for the junior, John Mataluna. You can't rush four and, and, and think that Melville's not going to have enough time. And even if the secondary does their job, he's running. And so you gotta, you gotta make that decision way quicker. It's either running or passing. But when he has time to do either one, that's when Colgate's been most successful. A gain of 23 yards on the catch for John Mataluna. Back on the ground, this is Holland. It's been mainly Russell with a little bit of Holland. We haven't seen John Wilkins at all in the second half. He's been dealing with some injuries as of late. So Colgate putting the game in the hands of the senior Russell and the sophomore Holland on the ground. Of course, with plenty of the junior Melville as a running quarterback, too. Under 10 to play in the penultimate game of the Patriot League season for each team. Melville taking a shot for Mataluna. What a grab! With Rigo draped all over him, Mataluna snatches it away. A lot of time. Colgate offensive line gave him plenty of time to throw. You'll see him sitting, doing his check downs. Finally sees Mataluna, just throws it out there. Mataluna going to work on Lehigh's best cover corner, Rico. His fourth grab. A first and goal for Melville. Collins upended with a short gain. 
Evan Harvey stepped in to make the stop. Now Colgate has really not only established their own, they've opened up the field here, and that's what Chris Young talked about earlier in the week. Getting Matt Luna, getting those wide receivers more involved. The balance of this Kobe team is at its best point of the season, he thinks. And they've done really well inside the red zone, mixing it up too, running it and passing it. Claus at a tight end as a wide receiver in the slot. Melville keeps it, and he's tripped up. Evan Harvey makes a play that Lehigh's been waiting for all afternoon. That time, Harvey was on the line of scrimmage and didn't leave it up to defensive end. Melville doesn't look great. Remember, he cramped up earlier in the half. And that's what I meant about doing something different, putting uh, an extra man on the line of scrimmage because the passing lanes are, aren't as uh, wide open inside the 15 yard or inside the 10 now. Well, the odds of a design quarterback run aren't great here. With the play clock at one, Colgate calls a timeout. And you can timeout. see Melville moving Colgate. a little bit more gingerly. Third and goal from the nine yard line. Midway through the fourth, Colgate and Lehigh, 35-35. Now you have a sustained drive by Lehigh. They get a chance to kick the field goal. Well, it's a third and goal from the nine yep. as we return here, and you're looking at yeah, yeah, they're warming up on that sideline. Nick Tachar, the long snapper. By the way, we have a final here. Fordham has defeated Georgetown. So Fordham's in the clubhouse. They, they posted the clubhouse lead right now, That's essentially. Right. They are 5-1. and one. Their Patriot League season is over. They got an early bye. And hopefully they're watching Time Warner and seeing this game uh, live. Third and goal from the nine for Melville. Colgate needs to win for the Patriot League title today. Melville flipping it up for Greenewald. Touchdown, Raiders. He maintained possession in the corner of the end zone. And Let's Colgate is in front for the sixth time. Yeah, and that was just a little crossing route by the two wideouts. They take the back out of the backfield. That takes the flat defender out of it. Now he's got to come up, leaving a nice open alley there for Colgate to score. Greenewald had only one catch last year against Lehigh. It went for 13 yards. He's got two catches today, but they've gone for 37 and a touchdown as Bowman blisters the extra point through. Six different leads for Colgate. And the six puts them ahead of the fourth. And there's Melville right in the back of your picture getting some treatment with his Back down on the side uh, sideline again. Melville with the cramps early. Looked like he was getting stretched out right now for a possible later drive here in the fourth. Uh, you got to keep that. Uh, that is like nice and warm, stretched out, massaged, whatever it takes to make sure he can run. There he is. Going to work on the left calf area. Trainer could be the MVP today. No doubt about that, <laughs> especially in this kind of weather. Uh, and, and you know, Greeno, I remember last year, he, he had a, a, a good season last year. He comes from a cathedral prep. I talked about that school out of Erie, Pennsylvania. It's one of the more outstanding programs in the whole nation. Last year, he had 23 catches, 283 yards, two touchdowns. To 34 grabs this year over 500 yards, and that was TD number three. Well, Lehigh will start a drive in a familiar position, down seven. They've been down seven, nothing, 14, seven, 21, 14, 28, 21, 35, 28, now 42, 35. They have been here before today with seven minutes to go. I mean, just, I wouldn't worry about the clock. I'd worry about the plays right now. Shapnisky and Bragolo, the quarterback running back combination. All right, oh, all right, oh, 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 oh. 
Bragg alone at 150 yards on 21 carries, two touchdowns. Shapnisky to throw on the first play. Pelletier with some separation. Check that. It is Casey and a big hitter for Lehigh to begin the drive into Colgate territory. Gatlin Casey with the reception. 29 yards on the grab. Just a little corner route, a little post corner on that. Shapnisky looked the whole way too. Back no, I say he's not looking off any defender. <laughs> he's deciding where he's going to throw the ball before it's snapped, and he's gotten the job done. Lehigh's tempo was so quick there, the chains weren't even set yet as Pragalone moved forward for a four-yard gain. And then after big plays, you know, they, they don't want a lot of defensive uh, adjustments coming in, so they're going to try to run that second play fast. Play fake. Chapnisky again wide open on the post corner. Across the oh. 10 of the turf monster ends up eating up oh. Drew Paulson, the tight end. Oh. Oh. I'm sure there's no one feels worse in the Lehigh Valley right now than 45 <laughs> tripping over that white line. Oh, yeah. Little rigor mortis set in there about 10 <laughs> yard line. Only his oh, fourth yeah. catch of the year. Oh. From the seven yard line, a quick play here. It is Bragg alone, and he worms his way just shy of the goal line. Right around the one and a half yard line. Any concern about as wild as this might sound, ball scoring too quickly here? No, not today. Just because you, get it in. you just want to keep that score, keep the game going. That's been the tempo. Bragg alone. Staying low. Touchdown. Oh. Nice powerful legs. This young man's an outstanding football player. Lehigh has answered the call again. We're an extra point away from our sixth tie since we started. Yeah, and I'm just happy for Drew Palmer there because if, if they hadn't scored there, he'd have to carry the weight. And uh, another Floridian today. The Floridians have been uh, doing awful well here in the cold. Casey, who made the first catch on the drive, is from Navarre, Florida. One of many for Lehigh out of Pennsylvania. Extra point try. And we're tied at 42. Those are two probably two of the best states in the country for high school football, Florida and Pennsylvania. You can't go wrong with recruiting the players. And we talk about that all the time about New York players. We need to play more football games. Well, you have the quarterback from Pennsylvania, Shafniski. Hit his receiver, Casey, from Florida. Then hit his tight end, Paulson, from Florida. And then just give the ball to the running back out of Pennsylvania. <laughs> We're done. Colgate does have some skill position players up top in case Lehigh wanted to try the gutsiest onside kick of all time. But it will not be. It's a deep one for Mish. It's Mataluna at the six in stride. Trying to find space on the far side of the field. And Mataluna will cut to the 25. A Colgate player is down, Courtney Mims, who's been a special teams ace today, with a few words exchanged behind the play. You know, Kevin, you talked about an onside kick at that time, and obviously not a conservative call to make. But you look back in history, those Oklahoma-Nebraska games when Tom Osborne called the reverse with the guard. You know, sometimes you just do it. And uh, a lot of time, a lot of times they work because it's just something that you know goes against the grain. People are definitely not going to think you do it. Uh, the same with what's uh, Les Miles' nickname, the Mad Hatter. Yeah. You know, today, if I'm le if it comes down to this, I'm going to do everything I can to win this game. It's a kitchen sink game. It, it, right now, it would be. I'm not, I, personally, I'm not going to go in that locker room, you know, leaving any ammo on the field. Well, Lehigh next week gets Lafayette in the 151st meeting of the rivalry. And we've seen enough rivalry games to know that the favorite doesn't always win. Absolutely. You know, that's got kind of, uh, 150, and what are they, 15 miles apart. So, uh, you know, neighbor versus neighbor down there. 
That's going to be a great college football game. And Lafayette is 0-5, but Lafayette jumped out to a 13-0 lead on Colgate last week when the Raiders came back and eventually won 28-19. I heard Jake Melville's numbers. You know, something that Colgate's done this year is throw the ball more. And the win against Fordham two weeks ago, on the first drive, Colgate ran five pass plays in a row for a touchdown. And Chris Young and Dan Hunt both said that in their long careers at Colgate, they'd never seen a, a sustained touchdown drive without a running play. And we've seen a balance today, but how important has it been for Melville to throw the ball as the game's gone on? Well, they've given it to him. I mean, it, you, you got a lot of time that's going to create a lot of space uh, in, inside the, on the field, and he's taking advantage of it. And, uh, I've been very impressed with what Melville's done. He showed a lot of patience, a lot of maturity. There's not a lot of opportunity, and there hasn't been. Florida has been making some strides in opening up those schools on the, the lower levels. Colgate ball to start at its own 26-yard line. And the Raiders will keep it on the ground with Demetrius Russell, their workhorse today. It's Russell's 11th carry. He's got 50 yards, four and a half per. Holland with nine carries. And John Wilkins with only four. A lot of green in front of Colgate. 71 yards away from a touchdown, although just a field goal would do. There are five to play in the fourth. Patriot League title could be decided today. Melville, quick one, and a terrific lunging grab by Mataluna. Good for a first down. Out of the 38-yard line. That was a, uh, just a quick out. The tight end, number 80, was coming underneath. <laughs> he almost picked the ball off. Let it go to the receiver. Let's see if we can see two guys in the same area. He just picked it, and you can just see. Another terrific catch by Mataluna, their go-to guy this afternoon. First down from the 38. Melville gets it in the hands of his tailback, Russell, and Colton Caslow drives him backward. Uh, Colton just filled that hole really nice that time. But this is the patience of Colgate. Melville's just waiting. He just runs two or three plays, doesn't care if they don't get a lot of yardage, and then he pulls the ball out and runs around your end for a while. Dana Hunt said that they had to be aware of Caslow on every play. He has been Lehigh's tackles leader this afternoon. Under four in the fourth. Again, Russell sweeping his way to the 45, to midfield. There goes Russell, a next level run. Rigu chases him down across the 10. A first and goal for the Raiders coming up. Just a nice little bounce play to the outside. He caught the edge and got up the sideline. You can see him, he's just standing behind the those blockers makes a nice cut to the inside, back outside again. Just great pursuit here, Lehigh. Those two guys are just never say die on that play. And that, that's the most important for young kids. That's the one lesson I, I love to teach is don't stop. Ball is spotted at the three, a gain of 58 to set up a first and goal. Russell stays in. To Russell stood up lunging forward across the two down to the one and Lehigh signals for a timeout the second half so the, uh, the strategy here obviously is whatever Colgate does Lehigh wants to have time to get the ball back well, you want to use your timeouts on defense because offense you can always spike the ball throw it out of bounds so if the clock is going to become an issue you use your timeouts on defense where's this play one that play was one right at the cut inside then back outside again he was patient he just waited for his blockers didn't have to cut up too soon you know he took it to the edge let those guys all you have to do is run into the defender if you're a good uh, a back the blockers in front of you and you, you just make your burst off of that initial contact at, at the edge. 
We just saw the numbers on Russell, who was up yep, over yep, 100. Yep. Thanks to That's the 58-yard run. Colgate at 315 yards on the ground, 488 total on the afternoon. Second down and goal. The ball is at the one-yard line. Melville, handoff Russell, up the middle, and stopped. Timeout again for Lehigh. And it was Tyler Kavinas defensive end on the stop. Now, the last time he made those plays coming down, that's when Melville's pulled the ball out. So Lehigh has to assign somebody other than him at the edge to that quarterback. But a play action pass. And you see that big end coming down. Let's see if they go to a power formation. They brought in a couple tight ends the last time they were down here. And Actually, it's a three receiver formation. Yep. And the tight end, Quasi. James Holland, the Look running back. Look at that back. tight end. Any play action, I think 80's open. Holland is the back. Third and goal, the ball is inside the one. Melville gives to Holland. Colgate leads. Yep. <laughs> nice kick is huge. He's been pretty good, but I don't want to put the, the whammy on him here. Just nice block. That right guard just pushed number 10 right in the back there. Yep, Siegel, nice block. Nice block. Just power forward. Out, outweighed him, pushed him back. Bowman. Pennsylvania native is at every extra point today, and he's seven for seven. And not to beat a dead horse here, Paul, but that's Siegel, the Miami Beach native, blocking for Holland, the Royal Palm Beach native. There you go. That's a Florida, Pennsylvania day. That was just a good, good old fashioned, up the middle, in your face play. So James Holland has run for two touchdowns. Demetrius Russell, who had the big play on the drive, has run for two. Melville has run for two and thrown for one. And Colgate, which has not trailed in the game, has its seventh different seven-point lead. Two minutes, 49 seconds remaining in regulation. With a Colgate win, the Raiders will clinch their first Patriot League championship since 2012 with a Lehigh win. Lehigh, Colgate, and Fordham will be tied in the loss column. All eyes are right now on this kickoff team. Now, they cannot afford to make a big mistake here. Harris and Geis are deep. Donovan oh. Harris from his own six. Harris, good speed. There he goes with a wedge up the middle, and Harris is to the 39. That looked like it could have been even oh. bigger for a moment. <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to put the horns on Colgate, but I've seen it enough. And, and where'd that ball go? In the middle of the field. That gives you a lot of options. Watch where this ball goes. Right in the middle. Now he's got choices to make, right, left, or middle. He moves up, cuts to his left, and oh, just a good return. Looked like it was Ben Hunt who you know, got him. Yeah, and those returns give momentum. And the Colgate, they are fired up here. This could be it. Last drive. Colgate crowd, Colgate sideliner as loud as they've been all day. Five receivers for Shapnisky. 60 yards to go for the Mountain Hawks. Shapnisky complete. Sasha Kelsey a first down. And a shimmy out of bounds, a gain of 11. That's kind of gutsy on... Uh, Lehigh's part not to have 32 in the game. Just a, a missed tackle by Colgate. I got out of bounds. You got to keep those guys in the field of play. Oh, he's at the slot now. Yeah, Bragalone's oh, one of the five like receivers of the lot. Look at the space at the yep. top of the screen. Sure. He's on the counted for, and there's the bubble. 
Pressure. Carney missed him. And the pass is dropped by Sakaris. And, and that's not going to hurt Lehigh. That would have only been a three yard gain. But Bragg alone is open at the top of that field. He is unaccounted for. Shafniski didn't even look his way. No, no, I thought I'd have got him the ball as fast as I could. And now they put him back in the backfield. Pelletier alone at the bottom of the screen. Second down from just inside midfield. Shapnisky will tuck and run and get out of bounds at the 44. A gain of five yards and a key third down set up with 2.12 remaining in regulation. And 48, Nick Dichara. That was a very smart move. Uh, for, oh, I'm sorry, Buttermore. He made a, 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 an outstanding play. Just let him get out of bounds. Don't try to hit him. Don't get a penalty. Smart play. It's Bragg alone on a third down. Needs the 39 for a first. He gets a late push. Moves with the pile. But still appears to be less uh, than a full yard short. Yeah, yeah. And Lehigh is already bringing in the two tight end set. A quick slant, a stop. And look at the sideline. Yeah. Oh, it's great. They know they're just about and look at one stop away yeah. from a Patriot League championship. Fourth and inches for Lehigh. Shapnisky will keep it. And he's going to get it. First down. Hangs onto the ball. The Mountain Hawks are alive. And Amankwa Aye is in at running back. He actually checked out with Crawford, the fullback in. Colgate, some late defensive changes. Raiders are in flux as Shapnisky gets the snap and finds Pelletier. That know where he is. You Colgate. were right on it. And Kogi was all over the place defensively. <laughs> no, we're Pelletier. I mean, it's been Pelletier in um, Brad alone. So, God know who's going to beat you today. Go with the player. Shapnisky complete. Sakaris wrapped up inbounds. Clock will roll at a minute 20. And they have to go for the touchdown. The field goal obviously doesn't no good here. They're going to be under a minute soon. Manko Aye, the running back. Second and short, Shapnisky. Pelletier's got the first down. Down to the five-yard line with under a minute to play. Again, mistakes. A Colgate win. The Raiders are Patriot League champs. A Lehigh win. And there is a three-way tie in the loss column with one week to play for Lehigh and Colgate. And hold your horses here. Colgate is out of sorts. And that's a well-placed time. You, know, you, you want to make sure everybody knows where they're going. Lehigh was able to run some quick plays. You don't want any mental mistakes down here. Now's the time. Slow it down. You have the timeouts. You still have one left. Well, two weeks ago, Fordham came back against Colgate with two touchdowns in the final minute with an onside kick in between. And Colgate led 31-29 with Fordham going for a two-point conversion to tie with no time left. Kyle Diener batted the pass down. And the Raiders survived on essentially a goal-to-go play to end the game. They may have to do the same thing here with 51 seconds remaining and Lehigh at the five. I don't know if Bragg alone's in the game or not. I'm looking on the sideline for him. And the numbers yeah, on Pellets here. Ten yards a pop. That, that's pretty good today. Bragg alone's not in. He's currently all the way on the trader's table with his helmet yeah. off. He may have a slight concussion. Yep. It looks like they're treating him for that. Amankwa Aye is the running back. First and goal from the and now they've double teamed Pelletier at the top of the screen. Shapnisky to throw. And he just throws, chucks uh, it away. Yeah. He was looking for Pelletier the whole time. That was great defense by Colgate. Double team the best player. It was Castillo and the free safety Figueroa draped over Pelletier. And right now, if I'm Colgate, I'm going to take one of my linebackers and I'm going to spy Shapnisky. Because if he's got a lot of time, he'll tuck the ball and run. 
Casey and Kelsey, the receivers, bottom left, Sakaris and Pelletier, top of the screen. Might be double coverage on Pelletier again. Second down, Shafniski over the head of Pelletier. Third and goal coming up. Lehigh just tried a little crossing pattern, try to confuse the defense. And they just stay at home. There's not a lot of room to work down there. You don't have to overcommit to anything when you're down there. Sakaris will shift to the left of the formation, and Pelletier is all alone up top. And double team. So they have man coverage down here to the bottom on the three wides. Third and goal, Shapnisky moving the pocket. Incomplete. He had Kelsey with some space and missed he did. it. He did. But a right handed quarterback rolling left, that's hard for anybody. That is hard for anybody. You have to be a, a really a great quarterback to make that throw. And here, uh, oh. All right. Here comes the tight end rule the fullback yeah. Crawford yeah. and the slot receiver Knott. Yeah. And Knott is wide to the left. Yeah. Fourth and One goal. Play. Fourth and goal. Timeout. Colgate takes it. I'm still laughing about the cliche bowl. Here we are. <laughs> Last play for the championship at home. Well, it's like somebody wrote this game, wrote the script. What more could you possibly want? Colgate and Lehigh battling for a championship, trading scores. And now one play could be the difference. Let me ask you a quick hypothetical. Mm -hmm. If Lehigh scores, do you go for two? No. Because you've you tried to all day. Time. I'd go for the tie. I, it's because it's okay. been so even. And if I'm Colgate, I'm going to let him kick the tie. I'm not going to try to rush it, create any kind of, you know, fire call. All of a sudden, you know, you got in out there, right. sprint out. Nope, you can kick it and tie it, and we'll go to OT. Now, that's if that happens. Of course, yeah. Shabniski has missed on three straight passes, two for Pelletier, okay. one intended for Kelsey. Now let's see if Colgate's going to blitz somebody. I definitely blitz somebody from my left, from Colgate's left side. Make Shafniski roll left with the right arm. Pelletier's got two defenders yep. near him, Figueroa yep. and Morgan. Here Fourth they come off goal. the edge for the game. Shafniski dumps it off. It's the fullback, and there's nothing. Ball is loose. He was down. It doesn't matter. Mackenzie Crawford gets hit, and the Raiders are going to survive. They took that left cornerback, ran him in off the right side. Off their left side, that forced Pelletier to do something uncomfortable. Roll left with the right hand. All day long, Lehigh has burned Colgate's defense. And in the 11th hour, the Raiders make the stand. Yeah, and there it was. You saw him come in off Colgate's left side. It's hard to roll left with a right-handed quarterback. Put him in an uncomfortable position, had to dump it off, and by then, pursuit. A nice little victory formation here. There you go. That is the final knee. Lehigh has a timeout. Lehigh will not use the timeout. And the Colgate Raiders, for the first time since 2012, our champions of the Patriot League. Let the celebration begin. Kevin. The bucket of Gatorade has never felt better on a cold day. Dan Hunt and the Raiders are postseason bound in a season where they started 0-3. They are unbeaten in the league. One league game away from finishing an unbeaten season, but next week against Bucknell, as it turns out, will be a victory lap as Colgate has clinched the title with an incredible, dramatic win against the Lehigh Mountain Hawks, who have nothing to be ashamed of. Oh, absolutely not. This, this was a great college football game. You know, it's always said when somebody's got to lose. 49 42, Colgate never trailed. They're the champions of the Patriot League, and we have much more to come after this. Championship celebration here as Colgate wins the Patriot League with a 49-42 victory.
over the Lehigh Mountain Hawks again that Colgate never trailed led by seven seven different times with the team's alternated touchdowns all 13 of them our Colgate player of the game is Jake Melville the dual threat quarterback who ran for two touchdowns including this one the first of our 13 touchdowns today was a 28 yarder he'd add this one he'd throw for one later in the game and he's down on the field with Gabby hey thanks Kevin I mean that Patriot League title on the line you're saying it's unbelievable but it's yours what what's going through your mind right now uh, it's, it's the greatest feeling in the world I mean we've been working since the last game of last year every day every hour for this feeling right here and to actually achieve that goal it's it's something special I'll remember it for the rest of my life what were those last few minutes like standing on the sidelines watching it all come together? It was terrifying. I mean, you're sitting there, you, all you can do is watch. But like they did all year, our defense always has our back. And when, when it matters most, they came up and made another huge play, just like always. Hey, it was a hard-fought game for you, too. Having some trouble there with a little cramp. What was going on? Yeah, I get, I, apparently I cramp in 30-degree weather. Uh, but well, whatever, we got through it. The line stepped up, the back stepped up, and uh, in the end, we got the win. Well, you know that now, heading into the next season, your next game. Thank you so much. Now, Coach, right here with me, how much did these guys fight for this? Uh, this sums up what they've been through for the last year. Uh, you know, we won our last game at the end of last year, and uh, that got us going a little bit with a great offseason. And these kids are just, they haven't stopped fighting. They've done everything we've asked them to do. You know, they've earned it. It's their title. It's, it's, it's you know, they should enjoy it. I'm just happy to be along for the ride. Before you can think about playoffs, you still got a little bit of football left to yeah. play next week. So how much momentum does this give you? Oh, it gives you great momentum. I mean, you know, I think they want to have the undefeated season in the league. And, and you know, we want to go into the playoffs on a, on a good note. So it's, it's an important game for us. Definitely a good note. Well, congratulations, Coach. Thank you. And, uh, go enjoy it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Gabby. And uh, we got the stat sheet here. Lehigh, 79 plays, 503 yards. But they didn't have 508. They come up just a few yards short. And in a game defined by touchdowns, it is Colgate that makes the final stand. And, and we mean defined by touchdowns. Look at these numbers. Total yardage. We're up near the 1,000-yard mark combined. Oh, it was great balance today on both sides. Uh, great day for Colgate. Uh, overall effort by everybody. Coaches, players, never say die from the beginning of the season to today. You want a league championship. They don't come by that often. What can you tell that was different about this Colgate team than the team that we saw in week three lose to you? Well, I just think their execution. They've had time to practice. They've had time to watch film. They've had time to mature. Sure. They got a lot of sophomores and, and now they're coming into, you know, almost juniors now at the end of this season. So it's a great testament to the Raider football. Congratulations to the Raiders. Best of luck to this program in the FCS playoffs. They'll be back for the first time since 2012. There they are. Huddle around the trophy. Wear the hats, boys. You deserve it. The champions of the Patriot League for the eighth time in school history. Dan Hunt gets it done. His first as a head coach. 49-42, your final score. Thanks for being with us on this Saturday afternoon in the snow and the wind and the chills. It was a lot of fun to be here, and thanks to everybody that helped make it possible, our entire crew here at Time Water Cable Sports Channel. For Pete Gaines to the great Scott Grant, Paul Seely, Gabrielle Lucivero down on the sidelines. I'm Kevin Brown as Colgate gets the win, 49-42 over the Mountain Hawks. This has been a presentation of Time Water Cable Sports Channel.